Circle. We are mm. now playing Dungeons and Dragons. Technically, it's Swords and Wizardry, but we all know it's Dungeons and Dragons. Thank you, sir. Ah, the party once again gathers in probably in the Hounds of the Pine Lodge, probably not in the Bristleback Inn, due to the presence of your four small humanoid companions who are Hello. Stra who are strangers in a strange land of very tall sun goblins. Servants of the highest light. Now, as I mentioned, I promised that I would, today, give a brief report on the Outer District and its propensity to the party as a whole, and to Magnus in particular. And I wrote up that report, and then I found the notes that Ross had given me, and I realized that some of my report conflicts it. So, fortunately, the strategic scope of my uh, changes are valuable to you. So here are the main things. You may remember... Uh, let me scroll, make sure that we are on the proper page. Right. King's Rest. Okay. We should all now be on the appropriate page on Cadence Rest. Now, you all remember that there is the peninsula wherein, dwelled, wherein now dwell most of the survivors of the who were rescued by the first generation of Wolfbreakers who came to Zelkor's Ferry back when it was still called, Zel called Zelkor's Ferry. The peninsula itself is in a state of prosperity by the standards of Anglo-Saxon England probably in an ahistorical level of prosperity. The buildings are wooden, the, seal, the roofs uh, shingled, and the streets in places buttressed against mud by means of boardwalks. It's a prosperous town, and its outer wall is high, strong, repaired in pieces until it has become a sturdy barricade against all those who would consider sieging the town. The northern, and beyond that, the northern part of the Outer District is called Krogville, for the great hero Krogon, who they hold in high regard. Now, let me find my notes on that. The business and workers, sorry, the business and workers who have not gained a place in the lands of the peninsula make their home and work here. It's wood and construction, the roof shingled, and the roads dirt with the occasional boardwalk. While most are honest folk, this is also where the threads of criminal work are bound into the fabric of the society. Rooting out criminals is no easy or small task due to their relationships with outside trade and the surrounding communities. The northern coast of the Outer District is Krogville, the proverbial hum of scum, per, the proverbial hive of scum and villainy, though it's more scum than villainy. Here are the only river cargo docks outside the control of the peninsula, so they import criminals, ne'er-do-wells, and trouble-making adventurers as well as goods. It must be emphasized that the Cadence Rest region has, save for lumber, no industry suitable for river export, so its criminal element has precious little economy to rob and swindle. They are occupied with plundering livestock from farmers, robbing liquor and coin from travelers, and the rare foray into river piracy. Often they impersonate collectors of tax or toll. They have some trade with the occasional goblin keelboat coming from the east, though what they offer up in exchange is unclear. The local dockside watering hole, Radakan's Riverside Rounds, is the defining institution of the district. The successful and rambunctious public house has ample and cheap imported ale swill, often hosts musicians, and serves as a meeting place between criminal elements. And this is the part which is most relevant to Magnus. Menachem and his men hold some influence here, which they use to remain abreast of sins unfolding here and to guide the depredations of its lumpen proletariat against themselves towards less destructive and more profitable ends. They manage a small almshouse, which serves as a final place of respite for the widowed, lame, and bedridden by illness. Rumors that, it, that uh, these unfortunates are being organized into a guild of beggars who spy on the district on Manakin's behalf are dismissed as mere slander, but are entirely true. Now, to the south is the Red Quay, or River District. As the, Red Qu as the Outer District stretches south, it grows markedly impoverished. Dirt roads become muddy trenches, wooden buildings are replaced with wattle and daub, more daub than wattle, and the road sinks into a muddy swallow. The hovels lining the shoreline house those who harvest the river's bounty, and day and night the riverside is lined with men and women at fishing poles, plucking clams from the mud, and tending avidly to small garden plots. At the far southern end, the residents have constructed a modest market square about a woodchip plaza, 
There, the apprentice apothecary struggles to muster enough medicinal herbs to tend to the needs of their clientele, and a smoky tavern of earthen brick and thatch offers questionable meat and drink to those undiscerning. Now, a high watchtower of the Hounds of the Pine oversees this region of this district, and the men in place there serve as lookout against wicked creatures from the Forest of Hope, and sometimes also as lawmen for the residents. As lawmen, in the name of Caden's Rest and the Hounds of the Pine, they serve as authorities who can settle disputes between neighbors, sanctify attempts to investigate theft and murder, and mete out punishments for such crimes as they feel fit. When a dilemma exceeds their judgment, they delay the matter until they can consult with the city minister for moral guidance. Now, to the east, there's the city of Clearberry. The largest settlement in the region outside of Caden's Rest is Clearberry, a farming village that sprouted up around the intersection of the Old Road to the Rest and the titular Clearberry Stream, which runs from the south to the river at the north. It pays no tribute and offers no allegiance to Caden's Rest, but it is just close enough for a steady trade in fish, wool, grain, and small crafts to thrive between them. And critically, Magnus holds its uh, overseer in thrall, by, in, or at least in uh, companionship, by means of a magic a magical charm. The great concern of Clearberry at this time is that the curse of no stone means they cannot procure a millstone, and thus they must grind their grain arduously by hand. Their hetman is in a tremendous tizzy and would play handsomely for a new millstone. Now my hope is that that covers most of the initial inquiries you have, and I'm going to provide more information later over time as I review the notes which Ross gave me and take the time to integrate them more properly into the write-up for Caden's Rest. So, so Krogville is like right outside the walls of Cadence Rest. They're basically like neighboring cities, essentially. Effectively, it's outside and to the north. Krogville is where all the people who are wealthy enough that they might want to live in a semi-urban environment, but not lawfully aligned enough to to either who, but are sufficiently not lawfully aligned that they either are not able to or do not want to live in the peninsula proper because the mood mm. of the peninsula proper is like a 24 seven Bible revival house because it is saved entirely. It is populated almost entirely by people who were saved through miraculous efforts by direct agents of the light, like father Bloombad <clears throat> at all. Okay. Is that where Menachem is? Did you say? Uh, Menachem, uh, I assume lives in, lives and operates mostly in Crogville, which is, well, yeah, I'm gonna try. We'll draw a little circle around it. Yeah, this area is much more populated you, than the version of yeah, this. Yeah, Lachan might live there, but actually Menachem should be living in my tower because I'm paying him... Uh, I'm paying him as, like, my lieutenant, kind of. I mean, he can live in Krogsville if he wants. He pr probably... Uh, he has his own place, certainly, from the first huge bag of gold that I gave him. <laughs> but he operates within that area, if I'm not mistaken. Sure, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but I just mean, like, he... he trying to the, connect to the tower. He yeah. has a brute squad. He has a brute squad. <laughs> he has a brute though they, squad. Though, given, uh, given Locken's trade, I keep getting the two mixed up. Monokin is the one who is charmed or is not no, charmed? Neither uh, neither but, one. Well, no, Locken is still charmed. Monokin okay. has not been charmed for some time. Okay. Locken was the assassin that was sent. Right. Yes. And he's and now had a... Yeah. And and Lachan has recently had a uh, an alignment change, uh, from chaotic to neutral. Well, that's nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For dividing the area into districts with a sweep mm. of my pens. Yeah. Actually, now, to check the map now. That helps. All right. Uh, so I will come back with more information for you for you later, Magnus. But uh, that's where we stand well, presently. Sounds great. It's good. Okay. Good to go. Yes. Now, another matter. Uh, Heretic, I believe you... I think you saw the message I posted about this in roleplay, but if not, a messenger has arrived uh, from the bishopric of... What's his face? Let me scroll up to this. Yes. A yeah. messenger has arrived from the bishopric of Kurgai, born by the hands of Sister Florence, a level 2 cleric, the vow of poverty and the message the extent of this message is that uh they want to know exactly who is in charge of the church up there in kate's rest and on whose blessing they preach the deeds of the light they have heard that there is a holy man there working miracles which are normally limited to the highest offices of the church and they wish to know more 
please write back post haste and send it by a trusted messenger. So I leave it to your discretion, and in fact, must leave it to your discretion as to how you react to that, as I have no power over you. But that is a thing which is now occurring, and a person which is available both as a messenger and as a potential retainer uh, if you want to try and drag her along on your hijinks. Okay. Alrighty, and with that, back. welcome right. back. I would tell her you, at least we haven't performed any exorcisms or trying anything like that on that magnitude. Well, you have raised the dead. That's kind of a big deal. I've seen it. I've seen it. <laughs> All right. And now... The biggest miracle. I believe that Magnus is bearing the hat of collar today. And so the question I must ask is, are there any last-minute things you want to cram in in terms of preparation before you mount up onto the keelboat and hurtle yourselves into the wild blue yonder? Uh, not that I can think of. <clears throat> uh, neglect on my part, but did we do the rope bridges? Did we, did we commission those? I don't think we did. I don't know. You never officiated it, but if you want to officiate it now, yeah, we can arrange that. Uh, is that still, is that something that we want to get? Remind me of what the purpose of it for? For uh, crossing oh, oh, oh. the chasm. That gorge that's 80 feet deep. With all the bones it, in the bottom. Because if that cathedral, yeah. it's, it's, it sounds to me like that cathedral is pretty uh, worrisome. Remember, so, the cathedral is purely metaphorical. I made that up as a as sort of a, a placeholder to hold the gargoyles. There is no cathedral. The cathedral is not real. <laughs> okay. Yep. Well, what what is it if it's not a cathedral? Uh, we just don't know. Yeah. The, okay. A gigantic cavern. The the th the Lair cathedral the is gargoyles. a stand-in for it wherever it is that the gargoyles are roosting. Yeah, but yeah. it's down deep in the bowels of the great cavern, two yeah. miles from where we had been. From the yeah. skull? Uh, uh, great. Skull. Uh, no, from well, where you encountered the uh, gargoyles, which is okay, just, so uh, near the entrance of the Great Cavern. We definitely need to have the rope bridges, and we should probably, you know, we should definitely. <laughs> I mean, there's no doubt about it. In fact, we should rig up little, like, uh, also at the same time, a couple of, like, you know, shimmying across um, like single mechanical ropes mechanical worse rope bridges like, like like a rope that you hold with two hands and sort of side, side scoot across so like there's a rope for your feet and a rope for your hands and you just sort of sidle across I was thinking more um, like basic training like rope course style where you just are like hanging upside down and you've got a rope yeah like single your, strands yeah um and you're shimmying with your feet while you're holding on with a, a rope, a smaller, like short bit of rope that is connected to your hands and wrists that's holding, that you're holding on to and kind of, so if we can make a few of those up um, also. Is that possible, Richard? Yes, it should be. Let me get take a quick gander at the, uh, the price sheet. But I don't, what's your budget for that? I've got a I couple mean, hundred I could throw towards it. That's, technologically, that's enough. Yeah. Okay. If we're gonna spend a couple hundred on it, we we better, <laughs> better be better really have good. <laughs> better be good. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But uh, uh, okay. So then, I mean, if we got that, I think we're good to go. Do we also have? Let's make sure we've got a, at least two rope ladders as well. Mm -hmm. If we didn't already have those. Um, okay. Uh. Here's how we'll call it. Drop down 100 gold pieces and mark it on one of your character sheet as a 10 pound item, which is all the rope you could ever want. And we'll move on from, and we'll call it that for now. Uh, okay. A, I, a I miracle of rope. You got it? Okay. Yeah. Off we go. Off we go. You depart. Keelboaten. We off be Keelboaten. Let me check the time sheet. Figure out what day it is. 
So presently it is the 29th. So we depart the evening of the 29th. And starting midnight, you enter, or rather, no, you, you leave early morning on the on the 30th, and from there you start enter to maximize your travel time during the day to minimize the risk of truly brutal uh, evening encounters. So, oh, I hate the day. Everyone hates the day. It's the worst time of worst time, except for a night, apparently. Yes, time is worse. It's the worst the time, is, except for all the other times. The problem is more that the things that like the night are even worse. So, have a 9 a.m., a noon. Ooh. So let's see what you encounter that first day. Thank you for your patience as I conjure random numbers. the first day you are seen off by a small mob of uh, well-wishers and uh, fanatics from the peninsula who uh, wave penance as you depart, go wild at the sight of you, and even Norbert is uh, proclaimed with unexpected, is the victim of unexpected attention as someone throws him a hand-woven pennant uh, wrapped around a fruit harvested from their garden. This is probably a new experience for Norbert. I get a fruit from the garden? Fresh fruit? Yeah. Yeah, someone throws you uh, some fruit from their garden with a uh, wrap, with a knit pennant wrapped to it. I probably, like, <laughs> like, like, fearfully, like, cower behind, uh, probably cower behind, uh, <laughs> let me pick a big guy. It's always, it's always going to be uh, Oofkill, because he's big. I like cower behind of kale. The uh, gift for you, you fool. Oh, well, I, I it, it, for me, not. I yes, probably, probably not means it for offering. Father Father Bloombed is probably what it's for. I eventually, I crack it open oh, and look at it. Maybe so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a fresh apple. The rest of your trip downriver is at a quick pace, and despite some uh, moments of dread as the evening goes on, and perhaps relief for the kobolds as the intensity of the day star dampens from a sunny springtime uh, extravaganza to something much more sedate and evening, you uh, you late in the night you arrive on the south shore of the river leading to the sea, and. Uh, pull the keelboat upriver into the uh, river canyon from that flows from within the great the great cavern, and yeah. dismount and make some way further in to the uh, long tunnel which leads to the great cavern, and there, in the relative uh, safety from the wandering things that come from out that cover the surface layer you can bivouac for a time in peace. Touch that on the morning of the 30th. Hang on a second. Oh, mm. again, I have for, again, I forget to move the player tab. Thank you. Touch that on the morning of the 30th, you are able to begin adventuring within the Great Cavern. Your adventuring day shall begin bright and early. On, let's say, 8 a.m. All right. And, uh, let's see, um, Zox and crew are camping. Hello. 
with you guys if possible. We, we would prefer to camp where you first found them, but that cavern has been handed over to goblins, who may or may not have showed up by now. Uh, we don't know. They, have, they haven't yet. Back, right. uh, well, if they're not using it, we could just camp. We could all camp there. Yes, so, you were able to bivouac under this, uh, in the relative shelter of the side tunnel in the long underground river passage leading from uh, the surface world to the underworld, which has the advantage of being neither plagued by sun creatures nor under creatures, meaning safe, a relatively safe liminal space. So they're they were camped outside. Uh, sort of. Hang on a second. I'll I mean, uh, just draw. generally speaking, they're not in the Great Cavern. They're not down the stream. They're where we are. Where they're toward. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, in that case, to, like, yeah. I I just wanted to say that Norbert, seeing that they're still here, like gingerly, tries to give Zox the apple as if he's feeding oh. a horse or something. Well, oh, uh, Zox would be completely, completely oblivious to like being looked down on in this case, and he would just be—he'd be very gracious to the apple and uh, chop it up into quarters for for the team. Grabbed it with his little hands and cut it with his little knife and yes, yeah, got, got his little, it. yeah, got his little little like raccoon-like scaly paws, but then but then pulls out a knife and then just <laughs> kind of like chops it into chops it into quarters for the boys. The knife is less cute. Yes. What does Father Bloombad think of these kobolds? I, I, I don't like them and I ignore them. Uh, <laughs> I understand that there is some, you know, necessary evil in the things that we do. The kobolds cannot be of mankind, but and they are, cannot be affiliated, and they are not natural allies or neighbors to men, but they can be neighbors for now. What, what are their manners like? As they eat, uh, kind of, uh, kind of like skittish, but also polite. They've been like trained both for this purpose and just generally. They are, uh, they seem to be of some kind of of, of society, you might say, and uh, they they're they're very prone to keeping to themselves, uh, but they also are completely oblivious to the the mannerisms of of you surface dwellers like they had a they, they had sort of a big revelation that like the uh the goblin language that two of them painstakingly trained themselves in despite having never met a goblin is not in fact spoken by men and the, the none of you guys know how to speak goblin and they're just they're just like everything that i everything i thought i knew is is wrong i don't know what the hell is going on all of this well, is very Ma bewildering to them. Well, well magnus during the camping hours uh before sleep will uh spend time with them in uh, in uh, a totally inappropriate uh, ribald and violent you know conversation you know the, the, to, uh, to to get on their good side yeah, yeah they're definitely down for that uh, but you very quickly run into the fact that they have been uh, forbidden from speaking too much about their home life so they're very happy to hear more about about you guys and they fill up the space by asking more about human life but like they're not good enough at at keeping secrets to talk around the fact that they've been forbidden from from speaking about like who their boss is. Uh, he's more interested in attempting to spend time learning Goblin, if possible. We can talk later about whether that's mechanically possible, but it's something he's going to yeah, engage. They'd be in. happy to cooperate and ho and and keep hoping that maybe you have some pointers because like. Yeah, they only they've only spoken goblin secondhand, but they were intelligible to a goblin, so you know it's close enough. The matter of learning languages is something I'm always I'm always prone to encourage some level of discourse with with uh, critters, mm -hmm. but we'll figure something out. Yeah. Nothing else. Eventually, perhaps you'll find a magical tome that teaches you goblin. Perderi, uh, it, it was said uh, these these tales about you that you were on the that crusade up the river and you slew all those monsters with the with the the hounds of the pine and everything uh, so you must have seen some monsters are they usually this smart uh, i'm sure many of those tales are exaggerations i am uh no champion among the hounds but uh i mean we've faced some fearsome creatures but 
never never had the thought to converse with them. I got a cousin named Hugus and a great name. He looks just like one of these fellas <laughs> except not quite so long in the snout, you know. And um mm. he's not nearly as smart as these things. Condition. He does have a skin condition. <laughs> in that it's just poorly formed on him. The skin, it is. <laughs> oh, I think we've got good skin. Or Hugo's. Yeah. He didn't travel here with you and your mother? Oh, no, he did, yeah. Oh, he did. Oh. <laughs> you do. Heal Hugus. <laughs> yeah. All 12 of my cousins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I can give the names if you like. <laughs> and descriptions and various very, maladies. Very sober looking, realizing he knows very little about this strange man that he's been traveling with. <laughs> you thought the kobolds uh, were the weird one. <laughs> <laughs> Only the glint of Magnus's eyes in the darkness betrays that he's once again staring at Norbert. <laughs> All right, so in the morning, then, we proceed yes. towards the direction of this chasm we're trying to cross, which I think was still on the north side, yeah? Yes. Going west. Mm. Presume that you shall begin on the north shore and proceed from there? We shall. Okay. And now, now... <laughs> Not to get, well, no, forget it. I'm just going to say, I would like to, if we can, I mean, last time we pretty much hugged the wall the whole way. Mm -hmm. So this time I'd like to try to make our best way sort of on a more central route. Or, or do you think, you guys think maybe hugging the river the whole way this time? Or have we tried that already? I can't remember if we've done that. I have a really dumb question. Okay. Where where are we going? Are we oh, going to going... the gorge? Yeah. Can't we just skip there? I mean, like past this part though. Like, can we? Do we don't have navigation. Oh, I thought I thought Richard had said we. Were oh wait, no. You there. you have to describe it. That's what we're. Richard's. I'm sorry. Richard's asking yeah, well, for you to describe it. I think. Yeah, I was getting oh, the impression that we were exploring want... it. Oh, if you, I, I was under the impression that you would be lingering around in the, like the great cavern. But if you want to move to the steam caverns, then you then. I've got great news. You have entered a floor of the... That is a separate floor. It is a floor entrance. So per the... What's the word I'm looking for? Per the conventions, yes, of the game, if you describe to me the route you take to get there, then you can simply skip all random encounters and make it there. I, to be clear, I'm totally down with exploring the Great Cavern. I just uh, it, it sounded like you were describing how to get to the other cavern. I was like, wait, are we going that way? No, I was I was trying to figure out the route we hadn't taken yet because I thought maybe exploration. Oh, sure, yeah, yeah, abs, might yeah, might I'm be down. something we should do on the way. Yeah. To if, if, in, no, to no, how do you all feel? Go ahead. I'm sorry, <laughs> you go ahead. <laughs> how do you all feel about that? Number one. All yeah, right. I'm good with that. Uh, to answer your question, we had skirted along the wall, but we hadn't found where the river kind of crossed again. So to follow the river might lead us at a completely different path. Let's do that. I mean, okay. I, I, my, my ultimate goal is to get to those, what did you call them, steam caverns? Or wherever the gorge was that we're trying to, that we brought this rope stuff to cross. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I do think it would be beneficial we to explore. Last time, we should know the route, right? Sure. Yeah, we know the I route. I need someone to tell me what that route is. Well, I think so... he's. I think Magnus is saying that he wants to try to follow the the river instead of the wall to see if there's a different route, so that we mm -hmm. can know of more than one or explore the area. Okay. So, yeah. Do we that think is this one. is the same river that those goblins were throwing their trash in? No. It's, in fact, you're 100% conf confident it's not, because... It's not bad enough. Yes. It's also... Okay, I'm going to make a quick three-dimensional illustration. 
So the river that you guys are going to, it flows this way. And then you were following it upstream, turned off of it, found a highway, walked very far away, okay. and that highway led you to another river. This okay. way is simply, this path is simply uh, too far from the goblin settlement for it to be the uh, goblin garbage river. Okay. On the way, well, and when those things are all like quiet and professional, one of the kobolds tries to strike up a conversation with Norbert, just being like, oh, I had a, had a tribesmate called Outsy. They uh, had a horrible skin condition, though that was caused by a slithering monstrosity from the depths. I think they're doing better now. I mean, they died, but I think they're doing better now. Have they tried pipeweed? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Don't have a, we don't have uh, as much access to, to, to certain... What exactly does that do? Oh, it doesn't do anything. It just sort of makes you stop thinking about it. Hmm. They, they, they like, nod, they, they nod and consider this and stroke their long snout, not really getting it. Side quest. Pipe weed for the lizard people. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, again, so you, your plan is to go up the river? Yes. Okay. I thought so, it was down the river. Well, <laughs> right, against the river is flowing. Against the, the flow flowing. of the river. No. Yeah, that's up river. Oh. No, no, okay. he's no, Richard's right. It's against the flow of the river. You want to go, yeah. you want to follow the river because you want to explore, right? Yeah. Right, I thought I'm... the river was flowing east. Right? Well, it does... I'm have to... The only part of it I can see has... It does if opinion. you're west. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I mean, I, I, it, it might do to remind everybody functionally what we're, like, unless this river makes a hidden curve, like U-turn, mm -hmm. even though the map shows it going east to west, uh, I'm, pretty the... sure, I'm pretty sure... The, I'm pretty sure the, the actual directions... I could be wrong about this. But I mean, but yeah, either this... either way, I I, I, am, I feel like is are we really overcomplicated? You just want to follow the river, right? Because we yeah, haven't I done. I just that. want to follow the river. Let's the just do that it, source, towards its source. It's a one-dimensional yeah. uh, yeah. feature, so we just like follow the linear, or it's a linear feature, yeah. I should say. Mm -hmm. So yes. it's not like yeah, yeah, just like briefly show you the path the river takes as you go along it. You go against its flow along the northern shore. You find the gigantic pile of rubble left from where you blew a hole in the ceiling. Mm. Of course, behind the ceiling is just more ceiling, but still. Mm. You continue to go across. From here, you can see that there is uh, two opposite shores and a northern flowing segment here. Let me go ahead and make a suitable note is to that, that effect. The, uh, a branch in the river? No. <laughs> okay. It flows this way. So it converges from huh. the south. Mm. So we so, can so we can see yeah we can see that there's uh you know two different yeah this is like yeah f yeah fork yeah, yeah. like wow yeah, I should I guess I shouldn't have said branch because like well yeah fork implies yeah. it goes like this but it actually right. is more like this these are two flows converging yeah I I think okay okay you continue to go up the path that's a discovery yes how much then, time no, has passed it's not one dimensional there's another there's a branch. Oh, let's do some quick math. Sorry. I can also measure the distances if that helps. I'm sorry. I, whatever. No, no, this is fine. Uh, it's been about... Let's call wow. it... Wow. Two... That's let's go. two-thirds so of a mile. Yeah. yeah. Three-fifths. Okay. Ish. The terrain is not good, but it's not ridiculously bad. Let's call it... About two hours. It took about two hours. And then passing up the river, wading up river, I gave you that whole, I got all really lyrical last time. I'm not going to do it to you a second time. I like it's river. cold. It sucks. Yes. It's cold. It sucks. It's great. Okay. So now you're here. Okay. So we didn't really find anything. Nothing too novel. No. Nothing different. Okay. <clears throat> From here. Uh, you know that to the north, 
you can eventually you can find a passage leading to the Goblin Kingdom, or Goblin Hovel, Goblin whatever it is. To the south is unexplored territory and more steam. The area you're in now is currently even mired in steam. Cuts your vision to uh, 60 feet, which I am, which is currently uh, built into the dynamic lighting. If you go, f you're not sure how much space this, how far the steam. The, sorry, you're not sure how far the geothermal activity extends in this cave system. But right now you are in a place which is steamy, misty, and warm. Which is good, sort of, because you need to take some time to dry off. So we'll say it's another hour has passed in total while you guys recover from uh, wading upriver. And mm. speaking of, that presents some risk. <clears throat> I also have a question about that. Uh, why intersection convergence in the river? Mm-hmm. Um, it, the the place where it converges from the south and joins, um, what was it like? Was it sort of like gorged and uh, narrow, or was it wide like the other parts? Because it's like, tw what was it, 10, 20, 30 or something? It's too far for us to get across, and it's, it's fast moving and cold, right? It's At that point? It's not super fast moving. You think you're pretty sure that if you stripped off your gear, you could swim it. Okay. But it is cold. Like, you know how cold it is. You've been wading through it. It's miserable. Okay, so the boat is still a plan that's viable. The boat yeah, you would could, still... Yeah, you could drag a boat upriver. And you could drag the keelboat upriver. Does the area where it converge, is it the same width on the north and south sides? Because, and this is the reason I say this, Magnus and Ufkel, who's <laughs> mapping... Uh, that seems like a really important kind of point there that we've discovered then, if that's the case. Because uh, we essentially have two new areas to explore. If if it's the same width. Um, it's the same. If it's like a similar amount of flow, then that implies it's a it's an equally uh, mighty stream. Exactly. Up current, too. Which means that mm -hmm. it goes up to yeah some other area. Yeah. Okay. It's potentially navigable, but you... Uh, it's the flow is swift enough that you would need to pull upstream rather than row, but it's looks like it's probably shallow enough for you to do that with a long enough pull. Did we hear something like a waterfall, or uh, would it have, or could we have even made it out, or did it just sound like, you know, rushing current? I don't know if we could have made out a waterfall, but that I think is an important. Thing with Wait, it, we, no, we, I've got great news. I complete, I've got wonderful news, sort of. Uh, I completely got confused as to which way the water is flowing. It oh, does no. fork. It doesn't merge. It forks. Okay, it's a distributary. Yes. Wait, so it goes yeah. northeast and northwest? It goes like that? Uh, yes. Whoa. Oh, so well, we're going downriver now. That means if we could get a boat in here. No, no, no. You're going up. Upriver, yeah. Yeah, can't I can't actually see anything. So I'm gonna blip you back over to the Great Cavern for a second. Okay, okay. focus ping. Okay. okay, so it goes to the south and to the upper right. But oh, you're okay. still going. I, but you're still going I, thought you, I thought you meant it. Yeah. Okay. I got. I apologize for the confusion, as ever. <laughs> okay, it's okay. Okay, I know. Uh, so regardless, you do make it past the ordeal of trudging upstream. Me just a moment to pull up my relevant notes. In this case, the second area is just the other side when we come in, so that's that doesn't change anything actually. Uh, yes, like this is not a completely new area, you can already access it because the yeah, the flow of the water zone. So, yeah, but if you can get a boat up here, then that means that going south into the Great Cavern will be quite easy because you'll be following the flow. Mm -hmm. Whether we can get back out. That's a larger question. <laughs> also, who knows what's in the water? <sighs> Alright. So You're a little unfamiliar with the... Uh, keep going, I'll ask you later. Okay. Uh, toss it into the chat and we'll come back to that. Okay, he returns. Anyway. So it's been about three hours. <clears throat> so it's now about 11 in the morning you're here and I believe where you want to get to is the gorge so that you can start building a 
bridge across it. Am I correct? Oh, well, we didn't go. Mm -hmm. We didn't yeah. move to the other map. <sighs> Thank you for the reminder. You'll get there. How about now? Yes. Okay. Yep. Now, was it here that you wanted to follow along the river, or did we want to take the same path along the wall? Let's, yeah, same same idea. River, because the wall is what brings us closer to the goblins, and I guess we should probably avoid them for the moment. They seem pretty buff. I also will note, like, this place is gigantic. That I think, like, yeah. that keeps not coming across, and... yeah. So we might yeah, travel several is, miles into this place. So. Yeah, you have traveled several miles. This place is fan. Well, okay, you traveled two miles, but this place is gigantic. Like the scope of this place beggars the imagination. The main thing, as before, uh, the ground here is very wet, and it is covered with slimy lichen. So the footing is uneven, mm -hmm. and you have to move quite cautiously. Granted, the good news is you guys already move comedically slowly because you're OSR characters. So for almost all, so unless a pitched melee breaks out, you don't need to worry about it. But if a pitched melee breaks out, uh, you will need to move with caution. I'm actually a little unclear as to what that rate is. Could you refresh my memory? Uh, you move 180 uh, feet per turn. Yes. Yeah, the turn is 10 minutes. Is that right? Yes, that's 18 okay. feet per minute. Got it. The great news is that you are making great maps and are becoming very familiar with the terrain, and you will not be you will not be bushwhacked by traps at this pace. Mm -hmm. Not unless those traps are absolutely psychotic, which they sometimes are. Which they anyway, sometimes are. You follow upstream along the river. For about a fifth of a mile, which takes about an hour. Mm. Yeah, it takes about an hour. You reach a far wall from which the water flows out from beneath. The river here is shallow and low and fast moving and remains quite cold. You could conceivably wade across it. The wall here remains, as before, uneven <sighs> and full of little niches that things can hide in, including you in a pinch. The air here remains misty and thick. You've passed in this approximate direction before. You re remember that <clears throat> you remember that there is a passageway to your north and west from here, which from where you encountered some of the uh, somewhere to look for some of the giant rats let's have a look at the water well I'll save you time such as it is because you've had plenty of time to take a look at the water over the course of your careful stroll here the water here is clear and fast moving uh, it looks to your senses to be potable but you're but as ever you can't be completely certain uh, it's cool to the touch it has no do you wish to taste it because if you want to do chemical analysis of it, you'll have to use your mouth and mouth and nose. Uh, yeah. Sure, I'm, thir I'm mm -hmm. probably thirsty. Yes. Is the there... kobolds taste it. Uh, their hearty little physiques ready to keel over and die at any moment, like the beautiful little canaries they are. Uh, but they seem fine. Uh, they smell... They can taste some sulfur in it. In fact, they taste an odd... An almost sweet flavor. No, no. Mm. A sort of sharp distant acidic it tastes vaguely like that some ext extremely Lead. watered down wine is huh. the, the thing that springs to mind extremely watered down wine they can't quite put, put their senses as to wine huh. bet you uh surface dwellers would know a little bit more about this it's got an almost an almost fruity taste to it does magnus know more about wine or or is it the same sort of too much of a distant tinge too much of a distant tinge it's probably he suspects it's just some peculiar mineral in the water. Yeah, it can't be it can't be that much wine. Look at how much water there is. It's be diluted as hell. Uh <clears throat> but you say 
there's no, there's not really a way to continue following the river though, because it basically just goes. It just becomes into just the like, wall underground. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it appears to go through an underwater period, and it's no, and there's no way to tell how long that interval is. If you had magic that lets you breathe water or transform into a fish, then perhaps you could scout it thusly. But at the moment, mm. no. Such expeditions are barred to you. You need to bring in a 5e party. Even they'd probably have difficulty. So, uh... We, you said we could possibly cross it going to the west, right? Uh, to the south, mostly. The south. Yeah. Yeah, In, let's, let's try. In this direction. So you got this way, that way again, and this way. Okay. Do we want to rope together? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. With all suitable cautions, you rope together, prepare to cross the river. It's slow going, out of all thanks to all necessary precautions, and it takes you about 20 minutes. The far field is even more is even more geothermically active than before. The area is scattered with pools that are have formed into sort of craters that have cascade into each other like little waterfalls, and which are overgrown with strange and colorful minerals. Uh, sorry, strange and colorful uh, deep earth life that feeds on whatever minerals are erupting from within the from within the spring. You have direct. You can continue to travel this way along the wall. You'll see a large. Uh, there are signs of large pools of water here, but those are abstractions representing the uh, geothermal flows from this area. You found where all the steam is coming from. Certainly, you can also uh, basically any vector along this path uh, can be traveled. In fact, Magnus, can you? use the uh, measure tool to form lines on the screen that you can see. Can you see the lines that I'm drawing? Yes. Okay. Make a line indicating the path that you would like the party to follow. Um. Mag Magnus, I, I may be mistaken, but I thought we needed, if we were going to the gorge, no. do we need to go north? It, yes, yeah, but it, it... I'm just checking things out here. But if y'all want to turn around, we can. Oh no, if if okay. No, if we're exploring, yeah. That's you fine. are exploring. Okay. Okay, ba ba ba. Do you mind if I uh, leave little lights indicating the passages that you've pa traveled thus far so that I I uh, I don't think any of us would mind. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I want. I have. I want to have no idea. All right. In that case, allow me to briefly present you with lights. I, I was going to propose an alternate way if you wanted, uh, because the the top down view doesn't seem to offer any information because of it being so big. It's so big that like it's hard to parse out what's what what's going on from a like you know two D you know uh, so. Uh, you could scribble, and I would be cool. Like if you brought up that cavern thing, and you were like, "Ah, the river goes this way," and you drew the river, and you know, you like did that. That would be, I would be. Not a bad thought. Yeah. I wish it was possible for me to draw stuff on the darkness, because then I could just draw vague abstractions. When it when it's anyway. bigger, it is easier, you know, to do that. Uh, and I do that sometimes. Like in a dungeon, I'll do that. But like, you want me yeah. to give that a shot, guys? Sure. All right. Sure. Okay. Theater of the Mind plus Chessex map. Yes. <laughs> it's the best. This just serves as a convenient tool for me to draw on. Right, because we're not going to be able to see that much I mean, we're we're going to be able to see 120 feet anyway, so. And then we're going to move 120 feet. What? 180 feet of that. 
and if we skip three rounds, you know, whatever, that times four or five, six times, so. Yeah. How do I adjust your size? Here we are. Roll20 is better at scribbling than Foundry. I will say that because... That's very true. Drawing in Foundry is object-based. It's you creating an object, and Roll20 treats it like you're scribbling, and you can get rid of the scribbles really easily and change them. It's nice. Okay. So you travel south along the wall. Uh, it curves from a southerly route to a easterly route. You can tell how long it takes to remember which way is east and which way is west. And that took you about 30 minutes. You could have just not said that. Okay. So, we continue. We could branch or we could close off the loop. You wish to continue following the, the path and see if you can determine if there is a southern entrance there? I'd say yes. yes. Maybe there's something cool there. There might well be. Um, wait, can you tell us? We've been walking for a while then along this wall. Can you mm -hmm. please tell us... It, what about the floor now? What about environmental changes? Is it warmer, colder now? Is the it's mist... still quite warm. Uh, you're definitely still in an area with like, yeah, it's like gonna make little little pools uh, that are you're still in an area which is covered with little pools that are covered with like geothermal uh, that are emi that are geothermally warmed and full of minerals which are being metabolized by some slimy life within. Uh, the general territory here remains as it has been thus far. Uh, no novelty yet. I'll let you know if you step... I will let you know if you step out of uh, the geothermally active region you are currently in uh, into a place which is colder, drier, or both. Is our footing still, like, universally bad, or was that yes. just a feature? Footing, the footing remains crap here. As a general... You, uh, you have a suspicion that most of this cave is not going to be conducive to uh, safe combat. Granted, combat's never safe, but... It's safer when you have good footing beneath you. We would prefer heroic combat rather than everyone falling down constantly. Pratfall combat is undesirable to anyone. Do you wish to continue following this uh, underground path until... Sorry. Yep. Do you wish yes, to please. continue... Fo okay, yes. follow the wall until something interesting happens. Da, 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 da. So that's another 20 minutes. You reach a new thing. No. No. Give me just a moment. The passage before you begins to narrow until at last you can see two walls at the same time. As perhaps you may have never been able to first. To your south, you can see dim reflections in the lights you hold aloft. Evidence of more walls to the south and a chaotic arrangement thereof. Within them, you spy a sign of motion, a flickering light, one that recedes into the distance and vanishes. What else would use light so deep? Surely not the, uh, do, would the goblins use lights this deep, or no? They, they can see in the dark, right? Oh, that's true. Sorry. That's what I've heard. Yeah, to the, the kobolds would know. Yes, goblins, like kobolds, can see without light. Okay. Hmm. If you, so, if you want, if you want we, could, we could try to move a little closer. They won't see us as easily as you. Can you see? You could see as well, without yeah. without. Yes, if you would scout ahead. Okay, okay. And, uh, all four of the all four of the kobolds kind of like kind of like ready themselves up, get a little hype, and uh, kind of creep forwards. But the the ground is still really a bad footing, so we're not actually moving very quickly. Just kind of rolling our shoulders and then just kind of stumbling slowly forwards. Trying to keep it quiet though. Okay, here we are. 
as they scout ahead, they see that in the dist they see that the passages before them unwind into very strange and twisting passages. Mm. Multiple exits, one to the one to the south, and one to the south west of the south west passage. They see dimly an illuminated shape which recedes into the darkness. Did it seem humanoid, or could I even tell? It's just a, a, a subtle lamp far in the distance. The, the slightest suggestion of a humanoid shape. Hmm. Is it far enough away that I that I would have to go like a long ways to see it again? It seems likely. Hmm. Okay, I don't want to get too separated from the group then. I'll go back and I'll go back and tell them which passage I saw the uh, the shape move through. Okay. The kobolds so return and give their report. Yeah, scurry back and just like, oh, I, I, it looked it looked humanoid, but I couldn't see better than that. It was it was too far away. I couldn't get closer, so I thought I'd come back here so I didn't leave you hanging. And I tell them which passage it went down. Are we, are we going after him? Zox seems inclined to go after them. I'm very inclined. <clears throat> okay, okay, let's go. The maze winds and twists. Its geometry is unsettled and uneven. Uh, as we travel, Praderi is just going to pull out one of his replacement pieces of chalk that he got and mark the wall. That's a good idea. The wall receives the mark well enough. The air is here, still damp, though no longer as dense with steam as it was before. You feel in the air there is a faint, subtle, and uncomfortable smell of rot. Hmm. Don't like that. Like death rot or like rotting wood rot? Death rot. Don't like that. We have Father Bloombed with us. The abominations of chaos don't won't stand a chance against us. Okay. <laughs> Except you, you'll find. I'm not. Uh, 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 okay. Another thirty minutes have passed. What time is it now? Um. <clears throat> With 30 minutes having passed, it's been 5 hours and 50 minutes. Cool. To your south, you can see that dim light. Sorry, 5 hours and 10 minutes. Okay. To your south, you can see that dim light. Do you wish to pursue? Oh, we're here. Is, it a, yeah. is it a single shape? Can we tell? A large, single humanoid shape? You can't tell at this distance. All you can see is the light. You may have a light is... spell? It might be a light spell. That would be consistent with what you've seen. I was saying, is, uh, does anybody here have one? one? Oh, true. Because I has I, a spell of light. I can't, I can't remember in this game, but it, I think it could be cast pretty far away. Uh, so mm -hmm. we can... And if not, you could uh, cast a light spell upon an arrow and launch it towards the direction of your investigations. How far is it? Oh, it's it's lingering far away. Like it, it's not as far away as it is in the map. That's like six hundred feet, but it's probably like two hundred feet away. Yeah. Oh, right. You're, the map you're looking at, not the one you're showing us. Yes. I think we should pursue. Okay. Do you want to run or no. skulk? No, skulking is the best. I think the footing's too the footing's too bad for for running this distance. We got to just crawl closer. It's also, true. we don't know what it is. Like, my my current mental image is basically like a giant anglerfish lure wearing a hooded robe. Sixty feet is the range of light. Hmm. So we're nowhere near close enough. But you can throw uh, attach it to a projectile and, and present it. And the nature of the spell is such that you're not likely to lose the projectile. But well, that would, that would also to... highlight us first. Like, they would yes. see it coming from us. And I have to... You are, in fact, already thoroughly highlighted. 
you bear yeah, upon your person life. several yeah, strong okay. lives. Well, then there's no downside. Can we overtake them at our rate of movement? They don't seem to be having any difficulty remaining ahead of you. Hmm. Granted, at this range, it would be difficult to say. We're not really trying to catch up to them either. We're just following them. Well, they, so, they, they must follow. see us. Should we just call out to them? No. Actually, hang on a no. second. Let me briefly <laughs> uh, append the map and the, that you can actually see. Because I'm realizing again that I have not been doing that. Give me just a moment. Okay, I'm going to switch. Uh, da -da, da -da. Da -da. Like, yeah, I, I figured we were being a little like somehow sneaky, but you're right. There's no way we could be. There could be well, other things that don't see uh, us yet. Hmm. And and also, we're noticing them at the absolute outside of our ability to see that light. So, you know. I will defer to your experience. Well, it's more... I seem unconvinced. <laughs> What I'm convinced of is the need for treasure, my little friend. Hmm. Okay. Not to be. Is this visible to you? Can you guys see this little torch? I see a little torch icon. Okay. Move, it's yeah. moved slightly up and to the left. All right, there we are. So that's the direction it is. That's the approximate geometry of the shape you've gone through. But this is not to scale. Pursue, please. All right. Some let's, let's, tantalizing let's... us closer. Pursue keeping, I guess, that east wall on our left. Mm -hmm. You pursue until such time as the east wall cannot be keep, kept to your left. For the geometry has shifted yet again. Make sure I can get this. Mucking around with many moving parts here. You travel hundreds of feet until you reach an intersection, leading to the which uh, diverges you from your path, with diverges the path, so that you can no longer keep the east wall to your on your east side while continuing to follow the source of the light. Yep. Do you wish to... Uh, which do you want yes. to prioritize? Follow uh, the light more? I think so, yeah. Okay. As you approach the light, it slips off to the east. Sorry, to the west. Okay. Does, uh, does the light remain at, like, a um, single height, or does it, like, uh, bob around? It bobs around. It bobs around a lot. Don't like that. Yeah, the, uh, this might not be a, a torch light or something. It might be something well, more sinister. What, well, what of the quality of the light? Is it? Is it? You said it was reminiscent of a light spell. Is that? Yeah. Is that true? So it's not. So it does not have like the yellow glow of a flickering torch, or. What is the best? One moment. Fine. I want to make sure I give you a proper description of this. It's a dim. It's a, it's an uneven, eerie light, flickering and vaguely greenish. It doesn't have the same hue you have. But when I say greenish, you might you hold hold. You may be already remembering the chthonic light, which I spoke of in the previous session, which was embedded into the walls. That's not this. This is a very different character. Much paler, much more, less substantial, and much less grounded in solidity. It feels like something different. But if it's, it's fairy, right, so, uh, it might be fairy. Yeah, or... it's, it's, they're, okay. So they're just, they're just some type of willowy wisps of light, you're saying. <laughs> don't, don't say that. Uh, <laughs> don't say um, that. Uh, a, most, a most apt description, Father. Um, Perhaps we should head back north, then. Hmm. You would retreat north, then? Yeah, let's get out of here. Let's, uh, let's connect the paths a little bit. Um, 
Unless you guys are tired of this and want to just head back to the gorge. No, I'm down for, I mean, we're getting valuable information on the layout here. Um, yep. I mean, we could connect, like, take that path to the, the northeast, like, the yeah. goes to the east, or we could even head <clears throat> west and try to maybe head it off. Let's attempt the eastward path and try to connect the paths okay. and see what we're dealing with. One more hour passes as you uh, retreat your way back through the winding, twisting, and muddy passages uh, that the mysterious light lured you through. And does anything await you as you escape the cave? As you exit the cave, you are confronted by... Wait, we're exiting the cave? Oh. We, were, we were trying to fill out some well, We're exiting one cave into another cave, I assume. Right. You are exiting the Twisting Passage. Well, sorry, I'll, I'll show you the region which you are exiting. I was hoping to... Oh, where's my selector? There it is. Yeah. So we were going to go this way. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that way. Okay, never mind. Yeah. Then. Oh. I misunderstood too. Yeah, we're, we're trying to fill out more of the map. Okay. Makes sense. Perhaps you should mark on your chalk what kind of thing is down here. Well, we don't know what kind of thing is down here. <laughs> In that case, an hour has not passed, so unpass that hour. Make a wispy drawing sketch of weird lights, Pradiri. Down, down. <laughs> that, back that way. Old circle. 30 minutes pass. And I will draw the region you find yourself in. One color. ground still wet the ground is still wet and still muddy in fact it's so wet and so muddy uh actually no hang on a moment and does it, uh... while you are exploring this pit you encounter uh a something novel you find a pile or rather you first smell a intense scent of decay. Mm. And as you approach, you spy with your eyes what looks like a enormous rotting corpse being gnawed upon by equally enormous not so rotting rats. Oh, that makes me feel even smaller. Yes. How many? <clears throat> and a quick glance, you can see eight. And of them, uh, they, they seem quite preoccupied by chewing upon the giant the giant carcass as you approach do you wish to approach closer presently uh, you are solid 60 feet away let's just kill them all surprise them okay yeah, yeah. how about a missile volley and then uh yeah sleep if we have to right yep our music maestro let me turn on the comedy type music and also <laughs> I, I really appreciate you managing the music play benny hill <laughs> <laughs> There's rats in here somewhere. There we are. I'm trying to remember which PC knows Draconic. Or has that's demonstrated me. knowing Draconic. Is it? Hmm? Yep, that's Magnus. Alright. Kind of lean into it, lean in towards towards Magnus as a as a fellow Draconic speaker. I was just like, are we are we fighting over the corpse or do we just not like the rats? Both. It seems a little ripe. Uh, if you wish to snack on the corpse, feel free. No, 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 it seems way too ripe. Uh, 
Oh. It's a dead moss man. All right. Now, the Wait, armor you, class... Where are you seeing that? Oh. Uh... Focus ping. Yes. Oh, now, okay. The, arm... the armor class of the giant rats is 12. If you have ranged weapons, which can effectively engage at a range of 60 feet, please roll them now and tell me how many times you hit and for how much damage. Uh, I have to look up short bows real fast. Uh, short bows have a range increment of 60, so you should be able to hit just fine. Hey, nice. Yeah, I've got slings there, I'm paying. Slings have a range of 40, so you can attack at a minus 2 penalty. Okay. You said short bows could reach it? Uh, yeah, it yes. Alright, I'm pretty sure we established that my that my little my guys have short bows. Um, one of my Actually, fighters has done five damage. Okay. Yeah, I hit it from one point. Okay. Uh, I got a 16 and a 12. Those might have worked. 16 and 12 will both hit. Roll for damage. Okay. Don't forget, you get to fire twice per bow. Oh, really? Oh, okay. Yes. Both kill a hit for two damage. Oh, wow. I get some good right. hits that time. Check my bows real quick. With, with a volley of six, I hit once for one damage. Hmm. That kills it. Nice. Uh... I finished it off. And gun throw it. Well done, jump. Norbert. Oh, I was, I, that wasn't Norbert. That was uh, oh. Frangog. Oh. Oh. Uh, where is... Javelin saving the damage to the spear, right? 1d6? Uh, yes, 1d6. Okay. Of uh, a volley of five project missiles, only I one hit kill. or one damage. Wound. Wound. Kill. All right. I'm going to roll morale for the survivors. Feather them, feather them. That one is da -da, taken out. That is the surprise round. You have fallen upon them. And two. One. And. Two. And. One. Their morale is not strong enough. Uh, the cascade of arrows sends them into a, into a panic tizzy and they sprint off into the distance. Specifically, they sprint to the east. I'm going to put a little map on the... showing where the rats have scampered off to. And you guys have an opportunity to examine the corpse, unbothered by any of these little rats. Excellent. We can switch up the music. And I need to request a brief interval while I go to the restroom. Okay. Get out. Thank you. Now is a great time to stretch. I love how it looks like Richard just ran away down to the tunnel. <laughs> <laughs>
Thank you all for your patience. Zox is off uh, fetching a quick drink. I believe he'll be back in a second. Okay. I, I too, need to grab something from the door. I'll be right back. As you will. Mm, roots. Richard, you didn't hear me, but when you got up and walked away, your camera was kept you long enough or looked like you were walking into the dark tunnel. That's red. Right. Spooky mode. Hmm. Truly, these are some dire caverns. Wet, noisome, a faint sense of stench of decay. Dreadful footing. Weird, spooky lights. Big dead rat. Big dead. Big dead troll. Oh, does it? Does it look like this troll is not regenerating? This troll looks quite perished. <clears throat> Can we tell, uh, other than the, like, rat gnaw marks, can we tell, like, uh, what may have killed him? Uh, you can do so. I'm waiting a moment so that Magnus will be here when I, uh, exposit. Yeah, yeah. Oh. All good. But, but yes, it is within your power to determine this. I'm glad I get to jam for you guys. It is a pleasure. good point of comparison for the smell down here. Probably the most striking element is the, the rotten egg <clears throat> smell. Those of you who've survived and been through the higher up levels of Rapanathok, specifically like the entrance level, have smelled things so much worse than this, so much worse, that this is barely registering to your sense of the, of the imagination of bad smells. But for those of you for whom the stenches of the underworld are novel, which I think includes uh, most of it, most of the retainers, uh, Norbert, Pradary, uh, Ulfkul. This stench is a lot, but it's it's not. The sulfurous stench down here has a character. Dis the sulfurous stench of a rotten egg has that undercurrent of rot to it, of decay and ruin. This doesn't have that. This is a place functioning in good order, and your nose in some way recognizes that here. Or at least that's what you recognized until you entered these narrower, more winding tunnels where the subtle additional stench of rot took play, and then it's just rotten eggs again. That's just bad. Is, is it back. is it like the smell like when you're at a geyser, you know? Yes. A geyser is precisely the scent I wish to uh, convey. This is a place that is geothermically active. There is lively water here. Let's bring some poopery next time. <laughs> Dents and perfumes. Do you think Magnus will be back soon? He said he had to grab I'm, something. I'm back. The... Yeah, oh, okay. I, I'm back. Okay, well, welcome. Sorry. Well, I've got no problem. I understand how that uh, when interruptions come, we are at their we are at their behest. So, there is a big dead troll. Allow me to explain the nature of how of his deadness. Now, trolls, as 
heretic noted, are not known for remaining dead. Normally they can get back up unless they are slain by acid or fire. But it turns out that there is there are multiple kind ways in which something can be burned to a crisp, and one of them is lightning. As you examine the body and its rot, you see discover the pinprick marks of lightning. Uh, of electrical of lightning scars across its body. Uh, sp across its chest, across its legs, across its head, and across both sides of its head. And if you do you wish to delve deeper into its anatomy to determine like how seriously it's been injured by these lightning shocks. I mean, why not? Ah <sighs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, well, we, we should. Yeah, we should, everybody needs to spread out first. Scalpel. Mm -hmm. You assume a looser formation suitable for avoiding the greatest hazards of lightning strike. Uh, as what's their what's their freaking name? Uh, as Aelin, uh reluctantly turns their uh, magical dagger to the task of carving open a carcass in examination, and reveals that the creature has apparently been. Uh, killed by powerful electrical currents uh, directly to its brain, uh, ending its life. Uh, it's unclear how long these rats have been feasting upon it. There's no question it's unclear how long they could, since to some extent it seems to still be growing back. It's just... Whoa. Not oh. alive. Some like of its tissues are still vital, but no one's home. Have any of you witnessed a regeneration of Father Blue. Oh, yeah. oh yes, yes we have. But uh, question, real fast: Is there uh, marks on his feet? Does it look like he stepped on something? Like, are there stronger marks on his feet, or is it? That's is a it great else? question. Yeah. No, there are not stronger marks on his feet. Your, if your okay. hypothesis is that he stepped on something that bloomed to bits, uh, your the, what you see is not consistent with that hypothesis. Yeah. How his fast feet. do they usually grow back? Pretty fast. In like ten minutes, they're back totally fighting fit, no matter how much you beat them, no matter how close to death you beat them. Um, it, it, is there anything about its attire, if it has any, um, that marks it as familiar to us? No, it doesn't. In fact, the more you examine it, the more you're confident that this is from a different grouping of mossmen from the ones you know, mostly because its moss is of a different color, a different texture. Not, now, like most of that can be explained by the fact that it's dead and rotting or gnawed upon, but their their tissues are so vital and so resistant to decay that the disti the distinct brownish texture, as opposed to the uh, green texture of the surface mossmen, the tendrils of moss are longer and spongier. It's a uh, more fungal than plant-like, really. It seems like you would assume that it's a native to these caves. Yeah, yeah. well, what we have here is your basic subterranean moss man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, just so. Okay, so maybe one of the light things was able to electrocute it, and we should avoid those. Yeah. So, maybe we let... Have you guys ever brought back an intact troll carcass to Ullman? Uh, we have brought back parts of trolls to Ullman. So no. Have you ever brought him back a living but brain dead troll? No. It, so I there's a head one. How well? How heavy is this thing? Like pretty heavy, right? Yeah, probably about nine hundred pounds. So that'd be a, and we get we have to trek this thing a long ass place. But I mean, there's a lot of you. There are. Well, go up like a sledge. I say we make sure to cut its head off before we leave, and uh, and uh, and proceed. Okay. Should we uh, take a torch to the rest of the body? Probably a good idea. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, Seely, I, I feel like we've just been offered like a roll on the old treasure table, but I see that my kobolds have no idea this is on the table, and they're like, "Yeah, okay." Conversely, it will definitely slow you down to uh, pick mm. this guy up. Like, even if all your guys work together, you do not have enough uh, free weight to avoid dropping a uh, movement rating. So it will, it will drop you down. 
You can sled and Yeah, and, and it stinks, and everything's going to smell us from a mile away. Yeah. Also true. Um, okay. So, and there is, there is nothing else than, the, like, the trolls' belongings like that around here just kind of seems to be where it fell. Trolls rarely have belongings, and this one seems to be no exception to that. Are troll hearts valuable? Like, would I, would I know any of that? I seem to remember troll hearts being valuable, but I don't know if that's true. I don't think so, especially. Unless you haven't right. brought them before, in which case, maybe. I, uh, I'm marking off a torch to be used to make sure this thing does not regenerate at all. And, um, or does that continue to regenerate? We don't want to keep feeding the brads with an endless buffet. Um, but also, so the, the rats escaped went east. It also looks to be there's more to the west. Correct. Okay. If it'll burn faster, I could lend a torch too. Would that help? Yeah, sure. Do you wish to proceed? Do you wish to return north, proceed west, or go east? Uh, continue east. Okay. Oh, oh wait. Okay. Yes. Uh, yes. Correct. Uh, um, yeah. Well, what do you guys say, west or east? Hmm. If our mapping is accurate, the west may <clears throat> dead end soon. Yeah. Let's so check we might, out. might as well check the dead end first. Yeah. Agreed. Okay. Okay. West it is then. Okay. I keep jumping between the two maps to keep track of where you are strategically. The goodish news is that you are in fact correct. To the west it does dead end in short order. How much time yeah, has passed uh, since we came up on these ten things? Ten minutes. Ten minutes since your last pass combined with uh, the chasing the rats away and the autopsy and the exploration thenceforth. And doesn't seem anything of note here. Just more. No, unfortunately. The porous Just a dead rock end. And slick stone. Okay. So Do you wish to we go east? Yes, yep. Magnus. Tell us your intention. East, then, east. Yep. To explore the uh, the where the rats went. Yes. Okay. The rats are there, cringing against the far wall. Oh. It's a dead all. end as well. Yeah. No, there's no sign of, you know, any kind of. This is just all natural, stone walls. Yes. All everything down here seems to be natural stone, though. At this depth, the distinction between natural and unnatural can become uncertain. You're deep in the mythic underworld. Nothing here is a thing uh, conceived of in the mind of God. Uh, now, now, when you when you say it's a dead end, you're not saying it's an apparent dead end. You're saying it's a dead end, right? Yeah. Okay. Does anybody want to take time to look for anything on unnatural in these dead ends? Hmm. Um, we must be getting close to the end of our adventuring day. Well, your adventuring day can go on fairly long. You can hunker down basically wherever. Okay. Yeah, we're like, what, six-ish hours <laughs> in, right? Yes, oh, yeah. which I think is still like early afternoon. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, I mean... This place doesn't seem worked enough to have secret, have like secret doors. Yeah, that's the main thing. Secret yeah. doors are... It's possible, though extremely unlikely, that there is some elaborate illusion concealing a side passage. Something which someone is using to sneak up on you and to kill you in your sleep. But thus far, there's no evidence of that. Well, what do you think blasted that troll? What The will the willowy lights that we got? Or, I, mean, dancing I haven't seen anything thing. else here that looks dangerous. <laughs> but we, we haven't... And they don't know what it is. And I appreciate that you're putting in the effort. <laughs> We um, haven't. Well, it, there's no way to look at footprints, right? Would, well, would for any... now, go ahead. For now, let's 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 proceed. Uh... Oh my God, I'm getting a phone call. Let's proceed back to the north and follow the path down and take the northmost 
top pass, the northernmost west passage. Stop Makes you there. Sense. Your okay. life is about to get slightly more complicated because at the intersection, a wait, just, waiting waiting for you at the intersection, which I put on you here, is that glowing light. Yeah. Now, which now oh, is making no attempts to appear wholly natural, but simply sits there, shimmering in the air, waiting for you to approach the intersection oh. with tremendous patience. I, I was going to ask, would any of us know what things could shock a creature like that to death, aside from a wizard's lightning bolt? No, I mean, we don't know. We don't, what we know is that we have a threat in front of dragon. Us. much about that um in fact one moment i have to check something i'm actually not sure if the whole uh panoply of dragons exists in this setting you, you only fought a dog, dragon right Scarce the only that. dragon you know of is the one dragon you know of okay i know nothing mm-hmm for you at a distance of about not quite the distance of about 60 feet there is a flickering luminous light held in the hand of nothing supported by no one waiting for you as you attempt to approach uh, the intersection of the cave it is holding very still in the air sometimes it drifts a little closer to you and it pulls back a bit what sorcery is this? Beware. We, we, I, we should take advantage of this and, and, you know, and fire missile weapons at it at the very least. You think they'll hit it? Well, there's only one way to find out. Well, if we fire any missile weapons at it, we should probably all fire missile weapons at it. That's what I'm talking about. Right. <laughs> should, should, uh, we just moil, or... Sorry, did you say oil? I'm asking if we should throw some uh, some oil bombs at How the, far uh, above the, the uh, I mean this thing can fly, right? So it might be able to fly above any True. flames or Yeah, I don't think I don't think that like that like burning the ground would work. Speaking of, one moment, let me move this away. You uh um, 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 throw like a net on it? Focus ping here. Can you guys move so if this guy is here? So I got to affect manage the lights. Here we are. Now there's possibility of actual darkness again. And at the light layer. Okay. Please arrange your miniatures as you see fit. You should all be able to uh, move your own your own pieces, and all of you should be able to move every hireling. So, Magnus, I would like you to start off by assembling yourself and the hirelings into whatever into a configuration which the rest of the other PCs can fit into neatly. Um. Uh, Magnus, Let's last see. time I had uh, control of. Uh... Actually, let me just read it from here. It's uh, Frangig and Nam. Do you want them back? I had them because um, I was I had the the net gimmick. Just take them back. It's okay. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Um, I think they're fine where they are. Second rank, right? We should, we should spread out. And. Uh, Lockin's not here. Whoop. Where is Ailing? Uh, oh, there he is. I see him. Good, good, good. Yep. Um. 
yeah, I'm not sure what else to do, really. Spread them out. Um, Father Blumbad, you say? Uh -huh. I mean, if this thing, you know, potentially has some type of AOE attack, then, you know, you don't want to be punched up. That's fine with me. I don't know. Does that look good? We're shooting it. Is that right? I sort of, I sort of feel like if we're gonna shoot it, we should like use spells. Well, uh, I'm, I would love to do. Yeah, I guess we need to roll initiative if we haven't done that already. It, it's seeding you the initiative. It seems to be. Oh, I'm not um, able to move tokens. In that and case, I'm going to. That's odd because you should have access. Details. Controlled by all players. Yeah, uh, these should. You should be able to, uh, if you're not able to, F5, because that might be a weird hiccup, but you should be, you should have access to them because you are a player. Unless there's some, something going on with your account, which I do not understand. You should be able to move your token now. If you can't, it's a connection issue with Roll20. Yeah. Roll20. Oh, I, was, I was on the grabber thing, I need to be on the select thing. Oh yeah, oh, you do need that. Yeah, the grabber moves uh, the okay, the window around. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um. So it's just sitting there, like waiting for us to do something. It's just waiting there. And a singly. Yeah. Is it trying to lead us somewhere? Do you it have? Was. Do you have it's trying to lead us no, here? It's not. Say again. Speak with the dead. First of all, is like this. Some somebody have that? I don't have it. You, you don't have it. Uh, hold on, give me one second. Um, have, uh, yeah. Your, my, your mic is it. messing up. Yeah, your mic's I can understand moments. you, but it is, it's is—it's getting a little crunchy. Might want to turn it off and on again. But I heard you said that you didn't have it, so uh, I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. Uh, right now, I'm curious That's to nice. send you a light. I don't have to speak to Okay. okay. I'm curious, and, and, and look, Norbert will step forward like stupidly and willingly try to talk to it and E.T. just like go toward it see if it does something don't touch it okay. <laughs> what do you say um <clears throat> uh hello there uh my name's uh well maybe uh, <clears throat> uh maybe I shouldn't tell you my name I um uh, who are you and um why do you abide this place? The light shines. It reshapes itself slowly from a visage. It reshapes itself slowly from a luminous abstraction, a light cast by nothing, into a single coherent, sharp shape in the air. A tiny, like a tiny person, formed crudely. As though by the hands of a child. It expands slowly into the vague, into a vague feminine shape. It extends a, a hand, a hand with no distinct fingers, vague and incomplete. A beckoning gesture. Come. Uh, it's into the dark. Yeah. It's very all right. Uh, Norbert's gonna follow it. Okay. <laughs> we'll follow after Norbert. Yeah. <sighs> oh, that is poor Norbert. <laughs> <laughs> I, le I, le I, I lean over to the to the kobolds and stay in Draconic. Uh, sometimes some problems solve themselves. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I will quickly sketch. It's not a problem. Pack. He gave me an apple. Well, I didn't. I, 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 I did not specify what the problem was, did I? Okay. So let me see this way. And da, 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 da. perhaps the problem was a lack of initiative, and dear Norbert has solved it for us. Perhaps mm. so. <laughs> All right. Da, da, sketch pad. Da, da, da. It's good he didn't give them its name. His name. What the? Yeah, come on. Da, da. 
Yes. <laughs> Can't trust fairies. No, says the man or the. Uh, well, no, we're all following the the one. <laughs> yeah, there's this whole procession like in combat form, like in combat formation, just like yeah. following after this thing. The, okay. this, so this it, meeting. It, it leads you this far. Do you continue? Yeah, I keep going. I, 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 to... I think we're on a different map than you, though. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, cool. just... I scroll down. Uh, no, you're in the right map. I just need to. Yeah, I just got to scroll down. Oh. Yeah, sorry. Okay. okay, so. Da -da, da -da, da -da, da -da. No, that's awful. Da -da. There we go. That's better. So it's going the same. Can we see our surroundings quite well? Pretty well. The you... could try uh, fanning out a little bit more to see further into the darkness if that's necessary. But if we can see the walls to all sides lit, then that's unnecessary. You can see the walls to all sides lit. Uh, your okay. light yeah, we, we have 120 there. feet of illumination. Okay, well then yeah. let's stay in For the most formation. part, the, the walls are usually no more than like 60 feet of, sixty feet apart. Right. Sometimes as narrow as 30 feet. But the inhuman cyclopean scale of this cavern continues to dwarf you. At no point does it narrow to something resembling a comfortable scope. Yeah, we're not really caving. Yeah. Which is good, you should never cave. It, it took a second for that to click. <laughs> Whenever there's a side passage, we should like try to peer down it a little bit to see if more 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 things are coming in behind us, as that's my biggest concern that's is that it's drawing us somewhere concern. as more things move in behind us. You don't seem doesn't seem to be the case. Oh, I like the way that the uh, the different light sources overlap. That's cute. Hmm. Yeah, tomorrow I will bring Norbert back to life after this. <laughs> Perhaps so. Don't catch your chickens before they hatched. The passage winds on, twisty, slithery. Norbert following the mischievous power. That reminds me, I must remember to feed Rex a chicken. He's a good now, boy. He earned it. I want to know what precautions, if any, Norbert is taking. Um, <clears throat> uh, darting his eyes side to side a lot, and then like, uh, that's about it. He didn't. He, he was careful not to give them his name, though. That's very important. That is important. Uh, so what I want from you is a saving throw but with a plus six bonus. That'd be a 18. Okay. Should be good. Okay. The ground slopes away as he approaches, as he, as the glowing shape recedes down the tunnel that now slopes downward to an almost 60 degree angle. He wasn't looking down, but he's not quite so lost in his own thoughts that he plummets helplessly down a, a slope, which is right there in front of him, illuminated by the very spirit he follows. Yeah, it old, looks like... Ooh. The old, the old follow a flying character at eye level trick. <laughs> let me tell yes, let me tell you what you see at the bottom of the at the bottom of the slope. Before you, you can see a great cavern, what appears to be a very large mound within it. A bar at the at the far end atop the the large mound and when i say large i mean like you it looks almost a hundred feet tall Again, is this part of the same the thing that goes down or does it like drop into a pit and this is below the pit it drops into a pit and in the pit there's a big hill okay hmm. and on the hill wait is norbert down here all by himself i thought we went with him we're still with behind him. him you're just right behind him and on okay. the hill you see the telltale sparkle of what looks like reflections of gold 
Subtle yellow lights flickering and sparkling. I don't know what to think. I do. <clears throat> Get it. <laughs> this um, seems a, a good place to use that, that rope miracle. Yep. We brought a rope. rope. Let's let's <laughs> throw down this big yeah. rope and get this stuff. Very true. Okay. Take so two spears and jam them into the walls and tie it up I and lay it off and throw it down there. I got some spikes and a hammer. There we go. Okay. What else is on the floor? I mean, this is a, some this sort is of most, spirit. This is definitely the most suspicious thing that's ever happened to Zox in his not very long life, but he's just kind of going with it. What, what can you tell us about the floor? Okay. So from up here, you can, you can look down. You pause at, you pause at the entrance. Uh, the luminous figures wait, apparently patiently, as you regard the terrain before you. There's a layer of mud uh, at the floor on the floor below you. The slope leads down about 120 feet, so it's fortunate that you brought the rope miracle because uh, you do not think it would be possible for you to make your way back up this slope in anything resembling a healthy span of time. You said 60 degrees. Uh, yes. More than 45. Like, whoa. Yeah. It is a... It is This would be the proverbial one-way trip down a slippery slope. At the bottom, there is a natural depression filled with what looks like a lot of mud. You're not sure how deep the mud is, or... Uh, from whence it came exactly. There is a really bad, miresome smell in the air. Uh, sort of wafting up from down there. Uh, and you're not completely sure if the way that gold is sparkling makes sense given the light sources it is currently exposed to. There's another light source in the room. Uh, currently hidden from you. Mm. So the, so it gets to like the bottom of the slope basically before it opens up into the cavern, right? So there's probably... Yeah, hang on a second. Like a... I'm going to draw a very... No, 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 I get it, I get it. I was just about to ask a question of like if it would be possible to see the ceiling of the, in this room. Yes, the ceiling is about 30 feet above your current position. Da -da -da. Cobalt senses have me... Wanted and to check the ceilings. I've got to ask about... Oh, you're doing stuff. I don't want to keep piling questions on you. <laughs> All right, thank, thank you. I'll be I'll be with you in just a second, but I got to, like, take a, take some measurements here and scribble something of an appropriate size. Okay. Definitely uh, seems too piled to be unintentional. Do you have a detect trap spell, Father Bloombad? Yes, I do. We're, uh, this uh, it's only 30 feet, right? So that could be... Hmm. What counts as a trap? Basically anything. Oh. Um... Sorry, to be clear, it is an extremely effective spell. It reveals bullshit of all sorts. Anything where, the G where you would look at the GM afterwards and be like, what the hell was that? The spell <laughs> reveals. Well, fire it up. Well, it's only it. it's only thirty feet. In, oh, okay. Yeah. And it only lasts twenty here. minutes. Yeah. So here is a rough sense of the location where you are. Uh, you are in a hundred. This region appears oh, wow, to that's be big. yeah, it's big. Uh, and in the center of it, there is a broad, shallow sort of pyramid. But at the scope, it is it's still almost a hundred and twenty feet tall. You guys you call it a sorry, sorry, sorry. Say again. You call it a pyramid, but is it like a pile of bat guano, or is it dirt, or is it actually a constructed thing, or is it like a natural formation of the cavern? Or it looks like it's a constructed thing. It's meant to look like it's a construction of the cavern, but some unholy power confabulated this. This is not the power of natural processes. So that means one of two things. Either A, some intelligent power built it, or you're looking at some sort of chaos bullshit that has twisted an otherwise natural place into a malicious configuration. 
Does it look like it's made of mud? Yeah, you wouldn't want to climb it. But it's covered in gold. Uh, speaking of, Maybe. let me sparkle the gold in there. I'm well, thinking yeah, I, I of believe the, you. Uh, I just, just for confirmation. Yeah. It, like him saying it, it's like a pyramid has me thinking of the uh, the moving mountain that we encountered. No, no, it's not like the moving no. mountain. The moving mountain would be much more egg shaped, and this is really just more like someone just took a huge jug of crap and just poured it onto the earth. It's just it was a jug large enough to make a sprinkled a... it in gold. Yes, uh, Norbert, Norbert, did you bring that net that we prepared last time? Yeah, so I was I was thinking, what if uh, what if you cast like web on the on part of it, or cast web on the gold, and then try to net it in, and we, um, you know, but but then we're like, uh, I guess a, a really important matter for that. Although it's it looks like this is like almost three hundred feet away, for five hundred feet away. So does so this look like thousands of pieces of gold, or does this look like uh, a whole bunch, I mean, or can we not tell? Gotta be a preposterous this looks, amount. Uh, this looks like... It's also fairy gold. Da, 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 da. Thousands. Okay. Um, so... Yeah, the only thing... Oh, and, and it's also hundreds of feet away, so the, the real key thing here is the there's only two options, right? The only options mm -hmm. available to us are to have Magnus cast fly on himself and then do something, whatever that is. So that's one option. And the, the second option is we go down in there. Those are the only two ways that this can happen. So, um, or some combination thereof. Therefore, uh, we have to ask ourselves, are we just going to fully commit? Because the loss of Magnus would be like a campaign diverting event. No, if, oh. no offense. I like Magnus as a oh. person and all, I mean, but he's like I mean, it, he's I'll like the heavy machine simple. gun. So yeah, it's, make, it sounds uh, like you yeah. like him a lot, actually. I'll make him real simple. Magnus is not going in there alone. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so okay. like, so the only option then is for all of us to fully commit to this thing we don't know about in a hole. So it sounds so like we, we should put a pin player, in it, right? Like we've got that thing that was going to bridge that gap, which yeah. could be per which could be repurposed to allowing us to actually get back up this slope yeah. if we secure yes. it properly. Well, on this what side. we do now is begin securing it. Yeah. Okay. All right. I am I'm concerned about this second invisible source of light. Yeah. It, what is the the first light doing in the while we're discussing this? Let's just sort of hover in here. Hang on a second. I gotta change this the color of this light so that it is slightly more visible. The kobolds, while this while they're preparing this, are going to be concerning themselves with being snuck up on from behind. They are, they're just gonna uh, try to maintain a three sixty. Good call. Uh, from behind you, nothing comes yet. Okay. Well, you, we'll uh, keep we'll keep making watch. For, we'll keep taking watch for now with the rope miracle you can lay down a absolutely rock solid confidence that you can get back up this slope at a good pace uh you well, will not e in fact you will not even have to drop your weapons so sturdy is the rope ladder which you are assembling how uh how many iron spikes would it take or is all, that all included in its construction that's all you get paid a hundred gold pieces for this thing <laughs> this thing includes everything it's got cup holders yeah, it's got cup holders. <laughs> or spike holders, right. as the case may be. Okay. So, you have secured the machine. And you now have a sort of a rope ladder leading up. To, so, I so mean, middle may... funicular. But, but the rope ladder, what? Um, let me zoom in here. So... Um, I made a little side view over here so that you can see, like, you're sort of like this is the approximate slope. So this is the approximate slope. The other thing that would only give us down to here, though. Like, yes. Uh, so I don't. Why did I? I'm not sure what good that does because basically we have to go down into a muddy pit. Mm-hmm. Like, How? Like trying to ascend a several hundred foot tall mud tower. Um, it's not several hundred foot tall. It's 120 feet tall. Okay. Well, it's we so just... Bad, I, I, I'm down. So so I'm down. Norbert will do it. 
Um, what uh, if you send some hirelings, we're down. I have a, I have a question uh, for someone in plate. What would uh, traversing the bottom be like? Uh, you're not sure how deep the mud is, so it's on. It's as yet unknown. We we I, we need to go fig- out the We need to go figure out the light. Yeah. So let's you know, and we need to prepare like firepower up there. Magnus ready to use lightning and mad uh, magic yeah. missile and Father Bloombad ready to use turn the undead and uh, all that kind of stuff and fire. Yeah. And I mean, we just need to go down. Weapons. Go down. Start going down the ladder with frontline guys. Go first. Oh yeah, you Spear, are too far yeah. away. I mean, so you have to come with us, yeah, because you're too far away to... A rank of spear guys behind him, Mm -hmm. and, you know, I I don't know how possible this is, like, anyway, I think that's the the route we need to go. I do want to, like, note that I'm playing the dungeon as it lies. There are things here which will just kill you. Yeah. So, your paranoia, fully justified. Yeah, that's my whole thing. Uh, is Magnus. Yes, sir. Uh, so does does Magnus? Do you have detect magic? No. Does any does anybody have one on an NPC or anything? Uh, I can cast additional lights. That's the only thing I've got. Someone has detect traps. So as soon as we get closer, then that could help. Hmm. We have to be almost at the top of that thing before we can detect traps. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It depends on where the trap is. Yeah, and I, you know, I'm hanging back because I have finger of death. So I yeah. mean, I'm not going to. <laughs> yep. You mentioned that detect traps lasts for more than instant. Is that correct? Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Yeah, it's a then two rounds. You round. could fire it's it up, and then we could start moving forwards. Well, it's only thirty feet. Oh, yeah. I guess you'd have to be a little close to the front ranks for that. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, it sounds like we're here to smite evil. If we're not here to at least, like, yeah. if there is a trap, we're gonna try to. Let's pull, do it. Pull, push the log over and see what's going on. So, I will right. volunteer uh, me cell to be at the front. Is is so? Is it only wide enough for like one person on this? I'm assuming. Uh, it's wide enough for two people to pass a, to to pass down. Like it would be if it was a rope. If you had used it as a rope bridge, no. But you are using it as a effectively a sort of funicular ladder. So, and it's. Like, there is terrain under you. It's just too slippery to hold your weight. Except right now, you can, like, you have, a, like, a wooden plank tied to the wood, to the mud, which can't support your weight. So, yeah, you can hold. Two people can just barely squeeze a breast down this thing. I say, why risk it in the front rake? And we'll just, for now, we can just keep a one one wide rank. Does that sound good to everyone? Just Works to your... limit, limit risk. Yep. Let's do it. So we do need to sell backed up by Pazling. Okay. Do we have additional ropes? Maybe we should tie off the first person going down. I got 50 Agreed. feet rope. Agreed. You can arrange it. I like. Yep. I assume that uh, any retainer who's marked as having miscellaneous equipment has some suitable miscellaneous equipment, which in this case means yes, you can have rope. Okay. So you begin to proceed down the thing. Uh, in the order of Pradari, Paisling, Niesel, with Pradari in front? Niesel, Paisling, Pradari. Okay. So Niesel in front. <sighs> As you go down, this is what you experience. You stride down the hill, holding torch aloft, carefully balancing yourself, torch in one hand, shield in the other ready to operate as need be. But before before you tread passing the knee cell, cautiously and carefully. Niesel begins to cough, first gently, then heavily. He grips the, uh, he pauses, he grips the uh, rope ladder behind him. He holds up a hand, urgently saying, no, no, we have to go back. The air down here is bad. And then the situation changes. Roll initiative. Oh, boy. Mm. That makes sense. It's all like carbon monoxide or something down here. <laughs> you, want to be, you have the initiative. 
Here's Can... the situation you are facing. Someone has a rumor about this. Three lights trans three lights begin to converge upon you. One of them is the sparkling light that you've been following. The other two arise from the treasure itself. Re emit the glittering sp sparkle of the treasure, congealing into two more floating orbs, which move first slowly, and then with frightening swiftness, directly towards Nissel. Well. Can you say it again? I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, short version. Uh, one, the existing Will of the Wisp is approaching Nissel. Two more Will of the Wisp reveal themselves to have been hiding in the treasure in the form of sparkly gold light, and then they are also moving for Nissel. So I will go ahead and put these guys on the field. One sec. Are we able to? Can we evade? Because we haven't made. Yeah. We haven't. We haven't combat combated anything yet. Please. You can attempt to evade, but important news: after they retreat themselves from the uh, the gold, the gold's still there. You can see it in their wake. The gold is real. Ooh. But it's guarded. By, but these things, we they're also real. We don't have magical I, I, weapons. Yeah, I, I don't know about trying to fight these on slippery, muddy uh, floor of unknown depth. Maybe we should hightail it out of here. Unless the magic people the feel there is some magic they have. The further down you go, the more there's going to be poison. Yeah, we we need to... I mean, so... We can't continue forward. We, it no, we may be advised to go back. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Could it be possible to like that they'll follow you if you go back, and then at least you can fight them where you can breathe, and then yeah, there's yeah. a separate issue you can concern yourself with the carbon monoxide or whatever the hell it is. Absolutely. Yeah, we, well, I we mean, can try to bait them yeah, out. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If they're honest now, our people that have climbed down have to climb back up, which means we have to fight them now to cover our people that are climbing back up. I mm -hmm. Yeah. I thought we, we were on the, rope the bottom ladder. yet, right? Uh, the only people on the rope ladder right now, to my understanding, are Niesel, Kazling, and Praderi. Niesel is about 20 feet from the bottom of the of the slope. And, and yeah, we have him gonna... roped. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you so... are... So you, you retreat. Now, remind me what your movement rate is. It is uh, full speed. This is going to... Like, this is probably still going to be uh, bad terrain. Um, get a sense of how far you can retreat before it's, we go. It's movement rate 9, which is 180, but at uh, running speed, which we would definitely be at. Um, fleeing, it would be times 2 of, times two for that, 360. Okay. Factoring in the extreme slope. One sec. I'm making sketching another little map. If we if we track. run, on the other hand, it, we will both make noise to attract monsters. Cannot map. We'll be automatically surprised in an encounter and cannot surprise anyone. Okay. I think we've already attracted the monsters. Oh yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah, we're there. <laughs> That's a done deal. <laughs> Although I have seen this where you are fleeing an encounter those. and then run into an encounter and then. Oh no. <laughs> well, for what it's worth, the kobolds are still they're still watching your rear. Yeah. True. The kobolds are pretty confident that you're not being followed. They've got pretty sharp senses when it comes to the underworld, and uh, they even, especially down here with the mud, they'd hear someone slopping around. Unless they can like float soundlessly because they're like a spectral undead, uh, ready to just sort of suck the air from your lungs and watch you die, yeah. then. I wonder what that would be like. Pretty bad. Oh, look, beholder. <laughs> anyway, so you you guys move. Uh, so your base move is ninety, right? So you're going to say half move because you're moving on like very bad terrain. So you guys get about most of the way back up. Okay. Is this little diagram coherent to you guys? You understand what's being to illustrated? Me, yes. Yeah. Okay. okay. These guys also uh, approach. Hang on a second. I got to make this How light a little less. Vivid. Is it is it a tunnel that slopes down or is it just a slope downwards into a big wide cavern? It is just a slump downwards into a big wine cavern. The cavern's enormous, and this is... Yeah, and very tall as well. Great. Yes. Now, that's great news. That's great news, because it means I'm not restricted in the placement <laughs> of my lightning bolt. That is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay. so you, so no one's in the way! Okay. However, 
uh, movement and melee occur first, which means these guys do get a chance to do their mischief. Now, well, no, are we, we, won, we, won, we won initiative, spells? though. Yeah, you did win initiative, but like, yeah. you're, okay, so you declare spells. Lightning bolt. Okay, you're declaring magic lightning missile bolt. Uh, for the other for ailing. It'll be magic missile. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, my my one guy is gonna go mirror image. Okay. M mirror image as well. Okay. Yeah, and the other my other guy will go invisibility. Okay. Uh... Yeah, Mordagion will do invisibility. All right. A great deal of magic is erupts into being in a very short hurry. Are any of you guys going to close to melee? Or do other things to maneuver yourselves from your current positions? I'm going to stand in front of Magnus to protect him uh, while he ca casts his lightning bolt. Okay. Um, I think my... I think for Derry and his two warriors are going to continue to retreat backwards. Okay. That's probably um, pretty sensible yeah you do get the impression that uh these things bear you ill will yeah <laughs> dobby leofstan and ulfkel also try to protect magnus and all right more is casting mirror image so movement that's the you guys want initiative so you guys movement goes first now, uh, may, now for their movement, they can move fairly far. They've got a speed of one of eighteen, so they can move close enough. They approach Nissel, swooshing up behind him as you guys uh, beat your retreat, mm -hmm. and they form little hands of luminous light. And as he and as he struggles back up into the air. They reach those hands for his. And he cries out in pain, assuming they roll at all well for their attacks. Time to do that. Okay. Yes. 15 AC. Okay. Well, Oof. each of them, gra two of them grab him. And they are attempting to perform an unarmed, they are performing an unarmed overwhelm type attack. So what's his hit dice? Uh, he has three hit dice. Okay. So I would like you to roll uh, his hit dice, and the two which successfully touched him are going to roll their hit dice. Tips. What is it? Is it like 3d8? I think you roll d6s. One per d8. Six. Uh, yeah. You roll 1d6 per hit die. Do I remember that correctly, Ross? D8? Well, well he's remember. a fighter. Fighter is d8. Yes. Let me make sure I'm Remember this at all correctly. Uh, you roll a d6 right. per hit dice, uh, but this is for grappling, so... Yeah, this is a uh, special grappling thing. Yeah. Okay. It, do seem to be it might, ma it Wait, might make thought... sense... To... Hmm? Oh. You rolled pretty well, 12. Okay. Uh, they win. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, they break the fingers on his hands, uh, and he cries out in agony as they throw him down into the pit below. Plump, plump, plump. He's That's... roped. Yeah, this is scary music. Very scary. Yeah. Okay. So he's down. So he's dangling. Uh, his hands are broken. He's dangling down here. And to say, to be clear, when I say his hands are broken, his hands are physically intact. They've just been seared by lightning and curled into useless withered husks. Oh God. That's that's worse. Yeah. yeah. I, I I know. I just wanted to clarify that. Uh, thank you for the spooky music. Uh, now spells can go off. Uh, so those who are becoming visible or activate mirror image, do as they will. That's a very effective mirror image. That's good. All right. <clears throat> now, I believe there is a magic missile and a... That's just a single magic missile. Hold on a second. Get it together. Oh, two damage. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <clears throat> I 
<sighs> Lightning bolt. Crack, crack. Ten foot wide is the path that it travels. That will definitely get all of them. And uh, it can start from any point that I want within 240 feet of myself. Um, and it's range from where it starts is 60 feet. <clears throat> okay. I have no doubt that you can strike them true with your lightning. Roll damage, if you would. That's a pretty good roll. 26 damage. All right. They do get a save by this spell description. All right. Thank for you half. for the reminder. Save for half. Well, it won't shock you that two of them succeed and one of them fails. <laughs> well, it may shock him soon. True. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What a roll. <laughs> the thunderbolt crack fills the air. This the place shakes, mud sloughs from the walls and shudders down down the passages as the shock wave of the thunderbolt shakes the air and the floor beneath you. The three creatures are sent reeling. They're scattered by the blow. They sputter and spark. And then they turn each and every one of them a baleful shade of angry red. Now, I, don't, I also want to point out that the that, the, uh, that, that it did not come from me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for the reminder. That's that's fairly important. Yeah, it, 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 that's why I made a point. I can start the bolt from any point within 240 feet of myself. All right. so. He did it, you say, pointing at the guy who looks exactly like you. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Peter Gri Griffin. Peter Griffin. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, are you the guy who is mirror imaged? I got a little mixed up. I think everyone's uh, a little. I, I okay. am not mirror imaged, no. Yes. Oh shit. Two yeah. of the work as well. followers yeah. did mirror image. All right, so one of them took twenty-six points of damage, and the other two took thirteen. Okay. Uh, so it is the next round of initiative. I would like you to roll again. Uh, I suppose nobody else was within Wait, what about magic missile? Somebody was casting that. Uh, did I did that. account for that damage. Uh, it oh, okay. did an additional yeah. two. In fact, taking that into account, let me uh, dim this one's light even further. Should we should we try missiles against them? I don't. I think it would be a waste of our time. You think they're immune? No. No, no, we don't know. Hang on, we, it's hard to have a hard time to argue, but it sounds like he's saying he, you don't know. Yeah, there's no way to be certain. Up, Father Bloom. Yeah. They don't <laughs> seem substantial. Striking them with a striking them with a weapon seems terrifically difficult. Give it a shot. It's true. You could roll high. Uh, well, let's continue our retreat into the hallway. I think, right into the passage. You got a whole new cell up. Yeah. Yeah, I, I can't leave without him. For that, that. But I, I can't if I move. Oh, say that again, Father Bloomberg? You can finger of death them, but I... not if he moves. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do... I mean, we do have some We have some magic items amongst us, right? We, we have the golden spear, at least. Yeah. We yeah. Have gold spear, we've got uh, a magic dagger, and we've got yeah. more spells to throw. Mm hmm Prideri yeah. has the magic dagger out. Um, I wouldn't throw that away. That might be difficult to get Yeah, that. not throwing that. <laughs> The kobolds by now have heard the commotion and will be coming over to offer their small amount of help. Okay. Um, I mean, it, what can be done for uh, Nisel? Can't, are He's we on a rope, so you can grab him? the rope and try to drag him up. I don't know how many hands are available. Yeah, I mean, it. Pazling and Prideri are tied to him. Yes, presumably, you guys so. can hold him back. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so... 
So can only right. they haul him, or can like all the all the like hirelings that are milling around back here? Uh, once you guys get to the top, you guys once you guys haul enough to get to the top of the. Uh, many hands of, can carry. Of, yes, then many hands can carry you. So you guys can haul him at a pretty good clip, but it's any get okay. anyone's guess. Uh, if you'll be, but it's not likely you're going to be able to haul him up far enough that you can recover him before these things have a chance to uh, express their wrath. Who has gold spare? Uh, Oath kill. Um, okay, Norbert. If we close into melee, we'll simply move in front to try to gain its attention, so you can move to the side to get a plus two to hit. If that okay. happens, so, that's just I'm going to put that on the back burner. There's nothing else there. Right. Let's get procedural do. with this. You guys have initiative. Declare spells if you wish to declare any. Light, <coughs> lightning bolt. Oh, you have, you have a, a lightning one? bolt. Oh, I do. Oh, I can do that. two, three. Yeah. You know, I don't have fly memorized, so. Oh. Do uh. I'm, it's, they emit light. I'm assuming light would do nothing against these things. Uh, so. I, I don't think more has anything. Yeah, they don't. Have, they don't have eyes, per se. Yeah. Uh, more will cast a light just for our own visibility. Okay. Could distract them. I don't know. It's another one of you. Uh, my magic. Yeah, my magic user with the four images will dance about, like he'll caper about capriciously in front of them to draw their uh attention. All right, sounds good. Roll a save me throw for that guy. Yeah. And are there any other spell casts that you wish to cast? Oh, not so good. Hmm. He doesn't catch their attention, I fear. Um, uh, Aelin, let's see. Aelin has... <clears throat> we're we're going to try... <laughs> We're going to try a web. I mean, what the hell? Sure. <laughs> okay. I Maybe don't that know. That works. That's reasonable. Worth a shot. It's, it, it Could keep him from eating Niso. <laughs> All right. That sounds like spells. Who, does anyone wish to declare missile fire? Uh, I think it would take me another turn. I think it would take my guys another turn to get close enough. Okay. I'm just assuming. I will fire missiles uh, at minus uh, four to hit. Why would you be at minus four to hit? Because it's beyond my maximum range. That's fair. Go How ahead and roll. Are they? Uh, about, about 40 feet away. Oh, never mind. It's within my ma it's within my range. Go ahead and roll to hit. Okay. Oh, and then Owen will do a sling as well. Okay. I miss. Unfortunately so. You do, however, determine that these things are unsettlingly quick at dodging. Uh, they flitter Ooh. flick from, from side to side. Uh, however, thanks to your distraction, uh, Owenin. Owenin's slingstone flies true. It lands square and bludgeons one of the ones which was already flickering, which proves to you, for beyond all shadow of a doubt, these things can be struck by, by regular matter. They are not immune to ma uh, material attacks. Right. That's damage, it. Did, yeah, I didn't kill it or anything. Just mad. Boink. They're already mad. All right, movement. You guys are hauling back. Uh, so let's see. Uh, bad terrain. At first, it's going to be extremely bad terrain. And but then, once you get up here, then you guys can just start hauling easel hand over fist at full strength. Yeah. So okay. that and is any retainers who aren't busy. Yes. So that'll yeah. get them up. Let's say sixty feet, which is one two. Two, is it, one, two, up. Is it, is it really just me? Just No, I'm just using you as a stand-in because your token is the one that emits oh, light. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yep. For like you. Come, at, you. come at me. <laughs> Magnus loses his mind. Okay. <laughs> this is what I was born draw, for. Like, a horizontal line okay. there. One of them, uh, I assume Magnus is keeping a safe distance, but one of them is uh, quite frenzied and takes two of them go after Niesel again. One of them, the more wounded one, furiously goes after Pradari. As it gets close, he gets a closer look at this thing than anyone else has before, and he sees 
that what he thought were the shapes... No, sorry, what am I talking about? Rot Norbert already got a really good view look at one of these things. Uh, it forms its, uh, diaphanous, its weird diaphanous hands, uh, and unfurls them into long, long, ugly claws, and attempts to take a gouge out of her dairy. Oh boy. Is it an attack, or is it a good uh, contest? It's just an attack. What's your armor class? Uh, it is... Lower than that. 18, parry to 19. Alright. You take 9 oh points of, sh of shock damage uh, as it discharges an unearthly power through your body, scoring a wound through parts of your flesh that have never seen daylight. Mm. Another one of those hits and I'm down. <laughs> Don't like that. Okay. Oh, Verderi's dead? No, no he's just one more of those and I'm oh, down. Okay. I, got, I got 8 hit points left. Uh, Niesel, uh <laughs> They are going to target the rope, which is holding him to you. Uh, one of them hits for five damage. Now, the question is, is five points of electrical damage enough to burn a rope? I would presume so. Rope can't have more than five hit points, right? True. Let's have him roll a saving throw. The question is if he can hold himself on a moment longer. Who wants to roll Niesel's saving throw? Who wants to hold his life in their hands? I got it. This is one. This is one of Algar's old followers, by the way. Hey, nice <laughs> rolling. Fifteen. All right, Niesel manages to cling to the edge of the rope ladder with his stumps, even as the uh, spirits burn through the rope. They are now that lightning bolt. You yes, can sir. definitely hit those two which are harassing Niesel. But there's yep. a small chance you'll hit Niesel as well. Go for now, it. I, I got it. That's yep. true. Yeah. <laughs> okay. it, it yeah. is, I'm sorry. I mean, this is not even a, a hard decision. No, that's fair. Roll a saving throw. So <laughs> keep him out of it. Yeah, you're good. You managed to thread the needle. Roll damage. I'll roll saving throws for these idiots. 24... Big money. All right. Ooh, One of them. Beat it? Yes, a 15 does. So one of them takes 12. And the other one takes 24. <clears throat> All right. They are both left guttering and sputtering, but neither of them are killed. Which is, I don't know about you, but I'd be pretty unsettled by that. Well, now it's time for the magic missiles. Yep. And mine are not the same as Aelin's. Okay. There's no save. Roll <laughs> initiative for the third round. Uh, yes. Hey. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Very good. Yes. All right. <laughs> I'm well, so hey, happy my over of here. Death went off, uh, last oh, year. hey, it's finger of death. Oh, you guess finger of death. Which one did you target? Uh, the bright, the the brightest one. All right. Uh, all right. I will Save, roll my yeah. saving. Save roll my, I death. will roll my saving throw. What's the effect on the save? Does it do any damage on the save? It dies or it saves. Okay. Uh, you can feel the light attempting to express its contempt over this thing, which is usurped its part usurped his power uh, but this creature squirms out of the light's grip and flitters away, elusive as ever alright All right. declare spells, let's wrap this up quick we're all magic a little over time okay, magic missile, anyone else have a magic okay, uh, da, 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 I think that's it uh, oh movement? wait, Aelin, sorry Aelin did declare a web did anything oh, yeah. come of it? Yeah. yeah, that's true uh, this one is slorp one of these is going to be adhered to a surface. Pick one. I guess it doesn't matter which one. This uh, one is... Yeah, probably that one. one. This one is admired in webbing and snarled to the surface. The other okay. one evades completely. Okay. All right. So, magic missile, and we're going to do web again, because why the hell not? I mean... Okay. Seem to... When do we do missile fire? Uh, now. Okay. You can, you can uh. safely attack this one. You cannot safely attack this one. 
you can attack uh, this I, one. I didn't see any. I didn't see your gestures. Sorry. Uh, this one you can safely attack. This okay. one cannot be safely attacked in in range combat. Right. Well, this uh, one you can attack range attack, but it's covered by webbing. Ross. I think we, I think we uh, agreed that my, uh, my my bolds were gonna take last turn to get there, so now they're here. Yeah. They are within fighting range. Take your shots. Here we go. Ross, Ross who are you rolling for? Uh, uh, I, one hit, I think. I, I didn't roll for anybody. Does a 16 hit? A 16 does not hit. They are eerily oh. elusive. Okay, well, then I missed all four. Unfortunately so. What to be clear, it's game? not... Uh, 27. Jeez, what? Okay. Uh, their armor class is 27? 27. Oh, I missed it. This thing moves like Wait, nothing. No, it's a natural twenty, life. right? Yeah, the, you hit it with a net. If you get a natural twenty, yeah, you hit. But otherwise, new. No. Oh, I, I did max damage. My mistake. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I guess my magic users could throw their daggers. They're close enough for dagger throwing, right? Uh, sure. Five percent of the time it works every time. Yeah. Uh, none of my peeps hit with theirs. You unload an armory at this thing and hit nothing but air. Alright, so, now it's their turn for movement. This one wiggles... Wait, I'm sorry. Uh, oh, sorry? So, that was a missile. Uh, I'm sorry. The, the, if we didn't declare movement, I would ask, uh... Um... Uh, da, 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 da. uh, Oofkill. And all of... Has anyone not fired missiles? Everybody's fired did. missiles. Okay, I did and not fire Moore. a missile. Moore has not fired a missile. How many hit dice does Moore have? Uh, Three. Three. Yeah. He has yeah. a plus zero to hit with missiles. I have one. We need a lot more than this. Uh, let's see. Oofkill, if you already fired missiles? Should, should Moore throw darts? Uh, you gotta get a natural twenty to hit. Oof kill, anyway, did so you fire missiles? Really I did not. You did not fire missiles. How many hit dice do you have? Hit dice? Yes. What's your level? Two? Uh your level two? Yes. Level two. Okay. Um we have seven people that can tackle this thing with a fishnet. And you can coup de gras it if you can tackle it. Hmm. Uh, that's going to be a lot better math than trying to hit it with a natural 20. Okay. He has, yeah, but he has a magical weapon, right? Yes, uh, but th Which they, they still it. have an armor class of 26 or whatever Yeah, it is. he's going to need the 20 to hit it. So, um, I propose for anybody that hasn't fired a missile that we get this fishnet, tackle this thing, try to get it to the ground, and then stab it to death. More will assist. Yeah, Dobby, the stout cleric, can also oh, yeah. jump in there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, get these guys. Laugh, Don't take no. crap from a floating lamp. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let an NPC tell you what to do. Get them. <laughs> okay, so I got one D6 there, so that's all I got. What else we got? I'm sorry. Should I... Actually, oh, go ahead. Do you want us to roll for all of our hit die as well? Or... I only have one. I'm out. <laughs> How do we you, roll if this? Are, if you are contributing uh, to the grapple, uh, please roll your two hit. Oh, sorry, please roll your your hit dice in D6. So if you have three hit dice, roll three D6. Oh crap! You're right. You do have to make individual to hit rolls. Don't these guys have? Don't these guys have like 18 hit dice or something? Like, what, sorry, they I have saw one nine. Of them. Okay, they have yeah, nine. Okay, yeah. I saw one. I saw two of them roll together with 18. Yes. yes. Okay. okay what, what do I need to roll? Like, what? What, what am I? How do? I, what do I roll? What? Two d six. What do you mean? Roll two d six, which is you have two hit dice, so roll two d six. Okay, so that's three, eleven, fourteen, nineteen total. Nineteen total. Okay, are there any other sources of grappling being brought to bear? The uh, retainers left on, I guess. Well. He's level two, is he? Mm-hmm. So go ahead and roll another 2d6 for him. And then, um... Dobby is level three cleric, so... 
There you go. 36. So 23. Plus 7 is 26. And then roll the 3d6. And then plus that is so that's a total of 30. Okay. That's what will be going on on your melee turn. Magic. Okay. But first, let's see. It has to roll its defense against that. Right. Let's see if it succeeds. Ah. You all leap upon it. You get out the webs. You get out the netting. You, It twists in the webs. You can feel its eerie strength. And then, like a snake, it splits in two and slides between. And slides right between the, the, uh, the threads of the netting. It was a Are good we... idea, but no sauce. Are we able now, to reattempt next round? Uh, yes. However, it's also it's 840, so there will probably not be a next round. Uh, now, melee attacks. These two are sick of messing around. They're going to go after Nasal. No. Okay. Uh, they're going to first roll to uh, roll to hit. Uh, 15 AC. Uh, one hits. Uh, for seven damage, which I think he can survive. Uh, he is a fighter. He can parry. No, he can't because oh. he doesn't have hands. Yes, it is an unfortunate state of affairs. Uh, however, he does survive, uh, uh, though he makes a truly agonized sound as these creatures torment him. Uh, now spells. All right. 11 damage to the okay. one who can handle it the least. <laughs> All right. I'm feeling good about 27 hit dice of monsters, but here we go. One of these wriggles their way out of the uh, the webbing, pawing its way out, snarling and spitting, and then d invisible darts flutter through it from every direction, and it just vanishes, puffs out of existence. Not a shred of it remains. An agreeable feeling of triumph is successfully contained. Magnus yes. does not doubt out in triumph. Yes. <laughs> Maintaining now. the presence of mind not to attract attention to himself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now, in the interest of the timing and of good sportsmanship, I'm going to propose that we allow your characters to retreat, since that is your aim at this time, and you are out of, as I believe, heavy munitions. I have two more magic missiles. I am okay with staying to get the treasure at this point. Okay. Yeah, same, same here, same here. Yeah. Let's see if you can get just a... pausing here makes some sense. No, we can wrap this up if we have time. All right, so one more combat round then. This one's for the marbles. Oh. Uh, both Pazling and Prederi will also contribute through the net this time. Okay. The right. whole game. There are two of them now. Which one of them? You're going to try to net one of them. One of the ones which is focusing on Niesel, which is why you have a chance to do this. The other one is uh, it's too wily for your ways at this point. Can the but two magic get... users jump on there also? Uh, the kobolds will jump on for whatever that does. Another 46. All right. If you are jumping on top what of this, for every character who is jumping on who is the plan of the net, Write their name and the number of de uh, number of hit dice they have, and just toss it into the chat. And I will. And then when we're that's done, uh, the uh, the roll twenty chat. Sorry. Okay. And then when that's done, I will have Chris roll the grapple on their behalf. All right. Shit. What's the d6? You you have four kobolds with with d4 with one hit dice each, so they each get, contribute one d6. Okay. D6. Eight, eleven, fifteen, eighteen, uh, twenty-two. Can Murdaigeon jump in there? Yes. Uh, 
Nisel is <clears throat> just going to try to run. <laughs> That's reasonable. That's very reasonable. Oh, but right, he but... can't. He's tied to you. Well, yeah. He's try, going to try to get to the back. He oh, yeah. to the end of his leash. Yeah. <laughs> We're at 25 so far. All right. Uh, okay, make that uh, 31. All right. Wizard's, jumping on, wizard's jumping on a fire thing, it seems like. Oof. We need at least one Whisper person to go to Gras still, right? <laughs> yeah, that would be Ulfkel. Oh, actually, yeah, so remove 2d6 so Ulfkel can stab. Okay, that puts us back to 30, uh, 29. All right. Roll 29d6. Okay. Oh, fuck. Oh, he's rolling <laughs> in batches of six. Oh, okay, shit. Um, <laughs> you scared the shit oh, out of the yeah. How did you, how did you yeah. roll 21 on 26, on like 29 dice? <laughs> That's 12 so far. Yeah, we're good. Uh, Okay, that so brings us to overcome. 18. Yeah, you got him. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. 60 yeah, got him. Okay. With great effort and vigorous anger, you successfully overbear one of the creatures which was attempting to snuff out Niesel. Wolf Kel's going to stab anyway with the spear. Is that okay, gold spear? Absolutely. Aim for the gizzard. Aim for the gizzard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I told you about fairies. I told you. Okay. So six damage to that one. Then you can finish it off next round. Normally that would never hit, but you're all overbearing it. Yeah, well, that's fine. Oh, now, roll your magic missile and don't blow it. <laughs> well, you might as well throw the magic missile at the other one because it doesn't I miss. I blew right? it. Oh. Blew it. <laughs> well, hang on a second. It's five D. Eight, it's five. Eight, that's eight. eight. Okay. Eight damage. Yeah. Coming oh wait! But first, I have to roll That's damage for the ones rough. for the one going after uh, going after Niesel because one God, of them is still alive. Just let him go. No, <laughs> they got he his ran away. They got the taste of that bone marrow, man. Yeah, <laughs> good shit. Oh no! Uh, yeah. Nope. They, they scorch him for five, which is still I think he's still alive. He was at eight. Shit. Now he's at three. Shit! It's not a great day for him. He's been moving though. He's in the back now, right? Mm -hmm. The other one, faint, the other one got grabbed. Faint. Now, the one you took the shot at is still alive. Do you have what do you have left in the tank? I have one more magic missile. Okay. And I have one more web. Well, Magnus has one more web. Oh, I have a phantasmal like a force. Idea. I have phantasmal force. Wait a second. Okay. I, I think I think that when you webbed it last time, it basically took like it moved again on its next turn, right? It yeah. 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 No blights yeah. at all. Yeah. Well. No, Hanson. No, it spent its entire movement getting out of its yeah. getting out okay. of the way. Well, that's better. Yeah, it but it did hey, hey, it, not much better. It, it, yeah. Phantasmal Pac-Man. Phantasmal what? Phantasmal Pac-Man. Pac-Man. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Waka 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 waka. Yeah. But I am gonna I am declaring magic missile in this particular case. But we have to roll initiative again, don't we? Mm-hmm. Mm. Alright. So, uh there are none which are in good range for melee attacks. Uh they have uh one of them is currently in the web. The other one is going to try to kill Magnus. Oh my god. How many hit points does Magnus have? Let's find out. Uh, what's, your, what's your armor class, Magnus? Uh, Bombad was standing in front of him to protect Oh, true, okay. So Bombad will uh, take that attack. Wait, they could probably just go around. These things are so fast. They totally can, but it would be a huge dick move. Oh, well. <laughs> well, I mean, let me really. They can move it, pretty fast, but he's only defending one spot. If you rule that he somehow knows I'm the source of the magic, then it would make perfect sense. Well, Otherwise, you are ca yeah. you are casting magic missile, which yeah. is not yeah. that hit. No. Anyway, up to you? Uh, uh, Father Bloombad, you are suffer a critical hit from this thing as it interpose right. as you interpose yourself between uh, 
Bellamy and Magnus. Uh, it it's me. late, but it does hit you. It does 2d6 damage. Oh, sorry. It only does 3 damage. Amazing. I'll come back to you later on the implications of that critical hit. You have one more... Wolf kill. I would like you to roll 9d6 for your coup de grace as you put this thing down with your spear. You want me to you want me to roll 9d6? Okay. Nah. How do I do that? Well, uh How do you how do you roll normally roll a uh, six sided die? Well, it goes up to six. I mean, oh, you know, if, if, you roll, hit advance, if you hit advance, I'll teach you guys the secrets of, of roll yeah. 20 large numbers later. For now, roll 66, and let's see if that kills it. You just type roll d6? Yeah. And then three more? Sure. You had eight, eight hit points left, right? Yeah. It feels like putting your spear into water which is you know thicker than air should be but you dig the gold spear in you twist it you feel it catch on something and the light blinks out and nothing is left magnus roll your uh God. Roll magic missiles get it Got <laughs> worst rolling <laughs> ever all of a sudden. but and yet and yet it's Seven just damage. enough all right it's just enough. Wow. Poor Nicel. He's still alive. <laughs> yes, I but he's still alive. How, he's not a very know, happy life. How it, like, healing crippling injuries works in this setting, if at all. We what would need a spell of regeneration, right? Yes. So my assumption is at this point you will uh, take advantage of the lull in the situation to seek out that treasure. But... Yeah. I'm afraid you're going to have to come back for it next session because we are well out of time. But I'll tell you this. Next session, you can navigate back to this exact spot if you just tell me how you got how you get there. But for now... Uh, oh, no, sorry, right. How cruel can I possibly be to yeah. poor Magnus? Uh, well, you could have killed me. I could have, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I probably could. should You have. could just be like... Never mind. I probably I should wouldn't, have. I wouldn't have complained out loud if you'd done that. <laughs> I believe you because I, you said out loud. <laughs> I would have cursed your name for the rest of the evening, but... No, you'd have no, gotten over it, eventually. I, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. No, okay. No. It, would have, it would have made my life simpler. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you do have another problem between you and there, which is the trench of poison air, which they were yeah. attempting to... Haul poor Niesel into so that 